2011. They're numbers. Okay, we got that straight. But、uh, what do they mean when you put them all together? 2011, that's what they mean. It's, it's a year.、Uh, and、uh, this is the best of the year. And、uh, we're going to count them down. Your episodes that you selected. 2011. Weird Al in the house. Yeah. 2011! Or 2011? Your preference, really. Weird Al Yankovic. Yeah. Scott Ackerman. What up, hot dog? What up, hot dog? This is from the 10th.、Uh, Your 10th、uh, episode. I'm finding it very hard how to do it. 10th episode! <laughs> yes, this is the 10th episode. Let's listen, bro. Number 10. Andy Sandberg is here. I am. He's, oh, that sounds so. I'm going to mow your beaver. <laughs> I'm going to mow your beaver. <laughs> hey, what's up, hey, man? Hey. I thought I heard something. I'm going to toss your butt salad. Okay, you are like there's, there's this thing right in front, this big black、you? thing right in front of your mouth. This is, this is not the first time I've heard that. What? Sucking on a big black dick, you know what I'm saying? No, I'm sorry. <laughs>、um, this... Sorry. Is that the door? It,、uh, I don't think so. It, 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 it couldn't be the door.、Okay. It, this is supposed to be just a one on one, mano a mano. Someone's knocking on the door. Yeah, open the door, would you? Okay. Would you open the door for me? Oh. Oh, shit. Hello. You don't have to、Hello. keep knocking on it. <laughs> We opened it. Oh, I, I don't know. I'm just <laughs> trying to be polite. polite. Yeah, yeah, come on in.、Uh, come yeah, on in. Take, come a, on take in. a seat. Hey, what's up, guys? Hi. Hey, so, hey Andy. Sorry.、It? Sorry. This is Ice. You can just call me Bro.、Uh, that's your name? My, no, my first name's Cameron. Cameron Bro. Yeah. Oh. I just call him Bro. <laughs> yeah, e v e r y o n e just calls me Bro. Hey, Bro. Hey, man.、Uh, so, I got a bunch of good stuff for you Sorry about today. This, Andy.、Uh, a bunch、okay. of good sativas, some indicas,、oh. some hybrids. Yeah. So,、uh, this is. This, this is I, I actually asked you to come after the show.、Not? Scott, you got your weed dude coming in our interview? Ah.、Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs>、oh, yeah, he does. <laughs> Badass, man. <laughs> Sorry.、Uh, could, do,、cool. I mean, is there any way you can come back? Or are you.、Uh, yeah, I'll, yeah, I could come back. I'll、no. see you guys later. You don't have、well, to you knock. You don't have to knock when you leave, yeah.、Uh, yeah. I'm being polite, man. It's like aloha. <laughs> Same <laughs> Say hello and goodbye. Yeah, yeah, you knock when you're here and you knock when you're. Oh, I'm just saying. Same take... thing as namaste. Yeah,、Shalom. sure, man. Yeah.、Shalom. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why I know that. <laughs> <laughs> you're a Jew. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, you can spot that one a mile away. Very astute, bro. <laughs> yeah. Hey, use my name in a, <laughs> in a sentence like that.、Uh, anyway, just take a look at this stuff. I don't want to come back because、yeah. I'm on my electric、oh, bike、so、and it doesn't have a full charge. He's not l e a v i n Yeah, yeah. Can I just get a little bit of that? Yes, this is, the new, this is called、um, Meryl Streep's Bush.、Oh. And it's a pretty heady high.、Uh, I wouldn't like.、Um, If I may, that's very nicely named because it looks exactly like it. I know. Wait a minute. How? What's up? How?、Um, did you see it's complicated? <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, man, I did. <laughs> DVD extras. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's just a shot of her vagina. Yeah, there's a shot of her <laughs> Close up shot for five of her bush. And, and let me tell you, she has a huge bush. Yeah. yeah and it's I, green. You know, and it's green. Yeah. <laughs> Nancy Myers went off the rails for a couple days. <laughs> <laughs>、uh, what is, yeah. Anyway,、uh, and then、um, <laughs> nice rejoinder.、Mm-hmm. This is、um, a nice vibe in here. You guys are. Thanks. Yeah, we take yeah. the lights down. We turn on the black lights. Scott, you want to buy some sweet so we can get them out of here? Yeah, yeah. Do you want anything?、Uh, yes. Yeah, what do you want, man? <laughs> Whatever, Scott's having. Oh, cool. Yeah, we have this one. It'll be perfect for you. It's called the、uh, uh, second bar mitzvah. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's a little more expensive.、Uh, it's、cool. kind of a heady high.、Uh, I feel like the last one was、yeah. a heady high. What else do you have? What do you mean by a heady high, by the way? Just, just like it like, kind of fogs up your head and stuff. Yeah, most, most weed does. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it does.、Uh, and、else? then we got, okay, so then we got this other one. This is, this is called、um, the iPad. Uh huh. And that's kind of a heady high.、Uh, it's something, I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like, go out in public after smoking the iPad. But,、yeah. like. Why do you call it the iPad? What, what features or characteristics does it share with you? It's、iPad? got a touch screen. Oh. Yeah. Weird. I don't think that's true. Well, I mean, touch it and. All right. I'm、yeah. touching it and nothing's happening. <laughs> All right. The next one is.、Uh, the, next right. one, <laughs> the next one we got is called.、Um, 
uh, paintless paintbrush. Mm-hmm. That's a long name for weed. Yeah. But it's fun to think about after you've bought it. Paintless paintbrush? Yeah. Okay. Hey, I don't name them. I feel like you guys Wait, are looking do- at me. Who does name them? Do you have a guy that... Yeah. Well, I just bring all the different strands to my guy. And What's his he- name? I just call him Bra. Okay. Oh. But his first name is Derek. Mm. And, and oh, was that him out there? Yeah. Oh, this is the guy back here on your couch. He was... <laughs> My couch is almost here, by the way. <laughs> oh, God, I can't wait. Oh, uh, you ordered a couch? Up. This place could use a couch. It could, right? I know. Um, so why do you have a guy who just names your weed? Uh, well, we went to high school together, and he's just kind of good at naming stuff, and he was mm-hmm. always, like, he named our band. What was that? What was that called? White Picket Fences. Yeah, he nailed it. <laughs> of course. It was one of those things yeah. for, like, hours we were yeah. driving around. It was like, well, maybe that could be a band name. Maybe that could be a band name. Right. And then when we got back home to my parents' house, he was like, what about White Picket Fences? And we were like, brah, you nailed it. Derek, brah. <laughs> Derek, brah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, cool. and then, you know, as we grew up and <laughs> moved into the industry of weed, he mm-hmm. became the namer. Yeah. How'd you get interested in this industry? By the way, we've never. I've talked always about had. I've always had an interest in weed. Yeah. Um. You know, and uh, my uncle was a grower. Um, <laughs> Not a shower. <laughs> no, he had. He was. Uh. He would only. He his dick got bigger when it got hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Sure. Hey, Scott, I'm gonna just stop us right here. I yeah. kind of feel like the weed guy has um, commandeered my interview. I yeah, yeah. Like, Actually, could we just get a little bit of that and a little bit of that? And yeah. We'll just, uh, no problem. Wait, 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 wait. Call wait. it a day. I know I just said that, but what is that one called right there? This one? Yeah. Uh, Alec Butwin. Mm. Yeah, that doesn't look very good. Good job on Derek Rock. <laughs> Because yeah, it's hey man, not once very again, yeah. I could go through all these names. You don't have to like them at all because I didn't name them. Totally, totally. You know, all of our I'm judgment, getting out scot free on this one. All of our judgment falls on Derek Bra. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, we'll just take the two that we mentioned and then yeah, uh, sure. Wrap it up and yeah, let's oh. wrap it up. Do you just want to put it on my account or? What? Yeah, we'll put it on the comedy bong bong account. Cool. Yeah, bang bang. Uh, okay, cool bong, man. Bong bong. Thanks. Thanks, man. Nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah, nice to meet you guys, too. So what do you do? You can just take off the headphones and... Yeah, just, like, rise, uh, Yeah, you know... <laughs> I think you will all, we will all rise up <laughs> <laughs> in the face of Bob Ja. Murray. In the face of Ja. Ja, I don't think Ja needs us to rise up yet. I mean, I, I what talk What do you mean? He's him. always asking for us to rise. That's what Ja does, man. He asks you to rise up. You yeah. know, speaking uh, of... Speaking of Jaw, that your Ross Trent song, you, you did oh, a really yeah. funny uh, uh, Ross Trent song about. Uh, Thanks, yeah. uh, it was yeah. about all the kind of cliches that uh, that uh, white guys who are into that kind of music, yeah, you know, sort of like that. Like, but you, you, I noticed the new record. You don't do a lot of those types of like sound alike stuff. Uh, yeah, man, what the balls? Um, do you, yeah, you know, it was just like certain people out there are just like a little too much into weed, and <laughs> um, yeah. Mm. It's just pretty it's annoying. annoying. Those people yeah. are annoying. It's like sometimes they smoke so much they can't tell when like maybe they're not wanted. <laughs> oh god, the worst. <laughs> yeah, the worst. Cool, cool. So what was happening with that song? Why aren't there more songs like that, man? Hey, Andy, I'm gonna turn down his. Uh, I'm gonna turn down his headphones. Okay, just, let's just whisper to each other. Okay, just for one second. Yeah, let's make sure that. We don't, we're not too loud. Oh, yeah, I don't think it worked. I, I turned out my own headphones. Yeah, it didn't work. Okay. You, yeah, man. I, let me turn them back up. Okay. Okay, I hear both of you guys really well. Okay, that's great. Okay, here's... Say something. Just, uh, bro, say something, bro. Say something, bro. Okay. Sure, man. Okay, cool. Yeah, we all hear each other. Everybody's hearing each other. Okay. Wait, I'm, I'm going to turn off the lights. Okay. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Let's mellow out, man. Cool. Okay, they're off. This is what we meant to do, right? Okay, yeah, put your hands on each other's Whoa. <laughs> what? what? Andy. What? Andy. Where where are you? (laughs) I'm sitting on your lap, man. Oh, dude. Turn turn the lights. Turn the lights. Oh! Oh, Oh, you guys are a blast, man. That was some real Pink Panther shit. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Clusteaux. Yeah. Nope. (laughs) (laughs) Missed again. Uh, (laughs) Did I? (laughs) All right. Well, it's cool seeing you, bro. It's great seeing you, and we'll, um, you know... Cool, buddy. Yeah, man. Are the Apple Sisters here? No, they have a they they record at a different time. Oh, yeah, they're funny. Check out their show. 
Yeah, check them out. Yeah. They're some fine ladies. Cool. Well, if you're going to hang out, do you mind if I just talk to Andy here for a little oh, bit? Oh, no, or, no, uh, no. Go ahead. This is cool. This is cool. It's like being at the window of the Today Show. You don't mind. <laughs> Super similar. <laughs> Except, yeah. see, yeah. like, they, uh, Al Roker cannot hear, you know, mm-hmm. what the people outside the window are saying. That's so how we, this is different. If yeah, they re- don't have cans of their own microphone. Yeah. They could replicate. Could you turn my cans up? Can you jack his cans? <laughs> Can you jack up my cans, bro? <laughs> Wait, you're bro. Yeah, yeah, I'm bro. But are you, you talking got... to yourself right now? I w- uh, I talked when I say bro, it's the it's the royal bro. <laughs> got it. Good to know. So like Prince William. <laughs> yeah, totes, bro. All that right, guy, that so... guy's on fire right now. Oh man, dude, he's got so much slamming. He's, going on. he's yeah. getting so much. I mean, okay. You know what he's doing? What? Pips slamming salmon. S- yeah. All day. Great all movie. Night. Great movie. <laughs> Great movie. Better body part. Soundtrack. Oh, yeah. Body part. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. Andy, let, so just kind of hang out. Hey, bro, just kind of hang out and chill. It's cool if you light up and, you know, we, okay. we, it's cool, but just like I'm in the middle Great. of an interview. And, and this guy's not a cop, right? Are you? He has to tell you if, if you ask him. I know. So ask him. Are you, are you a cop? No, I'm not. Okay, yeah. He's engineer. You Doug. bought that? He's, Everybody bought that? I mean, uh, it's not he has to tell you unless he's lying. It's he has to tell you. Yeah, like a vampire can't come in your house unless you invite them in. Yeah, although that's fake and the cop thing is very real. Yeah. Yeah. That's fake? I've had vampires come into my house through all kinds of ways that I didn't invite them. Mm. Mm-hmm. One time a vampire was all... Hey, uh, can I come in? I was like, no. And he's like, oh, I'm just going to come in. <laughs> I'm already here. Sounds like a friendly vampire. Oh, weird, uh, weird, though, because my foot's already through the Might door. Might I just kind of uh, slip by you? Yeah, I'm just going to head on in. Uh, and, and he's smoking. Okay. All right, cool. He's going to be occupied here for a second. Okay, great. All right, so, Andy, tell me about your influences. My lighter's, your- uh, my lighter's a little um, busted. Just keep talking. Okay. So, so I know I know that you were really into like uh, early '90s hip hop, mm. Ice Cube. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else you got? T- tell tell me about your influence. Far Side. <sighs> uh, really distracting. Yeah. Can I light that for you? Seems yeah, like- man, that would be great. Great. Just the lighters a little. There you go. Okay. Wow! Did everybody see that? Yeah, he Whoa. activated the lighter it's and flame right. came out. Yeah. Yep, Hit just that. let me get here. Let me take the lighter from you, just real quick. No, when you t- <laughs> take the lighter from him, it went out. Yeah, went, I was yeah. lighting it for you. Oh god, it's weird. I use bu- uh, matches and butane. Guys, <laughs> I mean, when when I say guys, I mean Andy. Thank you so much. You're for welcome. So welcome. You are welcome for nope, being here. You just me. This was you're great. Very welcome, Scott. I respect you a lot. Thank you very you're, much. Uh, you're a great friend, and I appreciate you, you here. taking time. Mm-hmm. This uh, is fun to be here. And uh, let's all do this again in nope. like five years. No, just yeah, me and never, Scott. Never. You never. Oh. Remember last well, time I did this and it was it was Zach and wait a second that's a plan that's a plan that is a plan all right let's take a plane break out guys <laughs> oh, taking a plane, plane break taking a plane break one last time taking a plane break we always have to take it a plane. Are you gonna be my girl? No. Number nine. My guest for the entire hour is uh, Andy Richter, and my co-host for most of the entire program is Marissa Wampler. My 15-year-old intern is here. Uh, very nice to see you. We were we were remarking during the break that uh, it's kind of hard to s- kind of step around and, and not say the things that we normally say on this show. We're sort of holding back. Well, I listen, I do listen to your show. Really? Yeah. Well, every so often. I listen to like maybe four of them. Accidentally. <laughs> Accidentally, right. I'm sure I'm... you didn't listen to the one you were on four times. Yes, I did. Okay. I was so funny on that show. <laughs> I also did some remixes of like my best bits. <laughs> Remix it yeah. with, with like a, a beat or yeah, something like that? Yeah, with beats. Because I have garage bands, so I did beats and stuff. But yeah, don't hold don't hold back because I know, I know that stuff. I watch True Blood and I have um, Showtime too, so. Well, True Blood, I mean, it's basically just they're vampires and they, they have sex on it, but there's yeah. nothing weird going on. Like I don't stuff. know. Do you think drinking other people's blood is weird? That's pretty dark Andy? and weird. Well, it all <laughs> depends on the context. You know, if you're like at a vampire club, what are you gonna do? Have a you diet coke? Fit in with when the in other, Rome. Yeah, you want to fit in with the other vampires. Right. 
Have you have you seen that new show Skins? That no. controversial show. I haven't Skins? seen it yet, but I I can't wait to see it. Right. It seems bonerific. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen a boner? By the way, do you know what a boner what? is? Yes, I know what a boner is. I have not had a boyfriend yet. Um, well, that's not the question. That, well, have you seen a boner? <laughs> no, I haven't seen... Well, okay. I have seen one on the internet. Okay. Really? Yes. What site was that? Boner.com? <laughs> it was called bonerjams.com. <laughs> With a Z, right? With a Z. <laughs> they're, they're pants that you wear to hide your boner. But I don't think the boners that I... I don't think the boners that I saw Wait, hold on. on this I, site... I, I want to go back to these pants that hide your <laughs> what boner. Did you just say? How exactly They're do they hide boner it? Boner jams are pants that hide your boner. Are they pants that extend past, like, yeah, yeah. as far out as your boner? Like, or do they <laughs> have a reinforced panel that puts it up? Uh, that clamps it, it down? Clamps right. it down. Like you know, Spanx? You, you tie a, you tie, there's a strap that goes around the, the front end of the boner. Do you need a boner strap. before you get into them? Uh, no, but you do. Uh, you, I, I'm really not sure. I mean, I'm familiar with the product. I don't own them. And you're the spokesperson. I've seen, I've seen the infomercial, and I've done some voiceover work for them. <laughs> but I don't know. It's something about a strap, and then the strap, strap. is in your pocket, and you pull it to the side. For emergencies. So yeah. some kind of like, almost like a parachute. If all right. of a sudden you get a boner, you pull the strap. Yeah, right. yeah. And it apparently... it. Uh, you, wh- which way the strap goes depends on the natural curvature of the boner. <laughs> Mine's a little to the left. Is I, it? Yeah. I should get those pants for this guy, Harlan Kovac. He sits in the back of our class and he always puts a windbreaker on his lap. Because I think he's like got boners all the time. It happens. Maybe, maybe his penis is cold. When you're <laughs> Maybe. Then get like a penis warmer or something. Don't let me see now, it. Now, you're the spokesperson for that uh, product. Penis, penis warmer? warmore? <laughs> Not anymore. Uh, it's they, just a little microwave that you put your yeah, penis yeah. into. Uh, you know, they have a lot of lawsuits pending, so... <laughs> it usually makes the penis explode. Yes. But if it doesn't, you have a nice warm right, penis. Right. At the, all you do is you put... It seems like a really big risk. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible risk. <laughs> it, de- it depends on the setting. It comes naturally attuned to 10. I don't but know. you always have to remember to set it to 3 <laughs> right. before you... <laughs> right, that exactly. Sounds, I would just get a piece of fleece or something and sew it on or That's something. Great idea. Hmm, I wonder or, if you ever thought of that. Or a hamster carcass. <laughs> oh my. Like in um, Star Wars. Which one are they? The slash tauntaun? Open yeah, the tauntaun. tauntaun. Yeah, Empire Strikes Back. They crawl in yeah, there. Yeah, you get a boner tauntaun. <laughs> yeah. Episode good, five. That's a good idea. Are you guys more comfortable now that we've been talking about boners <laughs> for five minutes? Hold on. Let me get my comedy journal out. Talk about boners, number one. <laughs> when it, when around guys. When around guys. Yeah. Talk about boners. <laughs> That's all we talk about. Oh my when, god! When the girls are away, I hope my stepfather. Hey man, how's your boner? Phil doesn't Pretty hear good. About How many boners you get yesterday? I got about three and a half. Oh my god! I had sixteen and three quarters. You know, the only thing I enjoy about coming to this show is that it reminds me that it's not so bad not to have a boyfriend. <laughs> What does that mean? Yeah. Like, hanging out with guys is just talking about boners. Well, so you have significant other things, others too. Uh, There's farting. Oh God! When scratching. we're when we're around our significant others, it's more like you know, will you touch my boner? Right. right. <laughs> will you will you paint a picture of it? <laughs> paint a picture. Yeah. Of it. May I or will you? you paint flowers on it? <laughs> make, make it look it? like a VW well, bus in the more, '60s. It's more feminine and more inviting to them. Something, they feel more comfortable with it. Something to look forward to. Number eight. It's time uh, for one of our favorite features here on the show. It's time for a little something we call Would You Rather. What's that? It's a fanfare. Where's that coming from? A fanfare. Is that Nick Lowe? <laughs> a fanfare for two not common men. Da-ba-da-ba-ba. Please don't talk during the theme song. <laughs> I'll beat them by my own game. All right, it's time to play Would You Rather, and uh, we all know how this is played. People send me Would You Rather scenarios to our Twitter, which is CBBWYR, Comedy Bang Bang Would You Rather, and I read them out loud. Uh, I'll open the floor for questions. You can ask me any question you like about either of the scenarios, and then I'll shut down the floor. We'll vote. We'll tally up the points, and everything will be all hunky-dory. I hope that would never end. (laughs) So uh, I'm going to do uh, uh, something I've never done before on the show. I'm going to do a combo question. What's this now? Uh, you seem very suspicious. but I am! People send me questions all the time, and sometimes I like one of the scenarios, but I don't like the other one. Like, I think one half of it will be funny. You mix it up. So I'm going to oh, combine. Sure. I'm going to combine two yeah, people. I think that's your prerogative. So you not only uh, crowdsource the material, then you uh, pick and choose. So yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> I say it's not good enough. Yeah, I, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Partially good enough. 
Uh, so this today's question is going to be a combo from uh, Amos Hunter, whose Twitter handle is Happy Amos Fun, uh, combined with Tony Wirt, who is Werter, W I R T E R. If you want to look him up, him or her. I wonder Tony. how long he's been an Amos Hunter. <laughs> I, how come the one guy doesn't call himself Werter's Originals? You think he ever uh, goes around hunting for a Red October at all? Or <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> did they ever catch that? By the way, <laughs> they never did. All right, here we go. Uh, they ask, yes, would, they <laughs> would you rather... <clears throat> me, me, me. They ask, would you rather always laugh to the tune of the MASH theme song or have Tony Danza appear as a devil slash angel on each shoulder for every decision you make? Would you all uh, rather always laugh to the tune of the MASH theme song or have Tony Danza appear as a devil or angel on each shoulder for every decision you make? I'm opening the floor for questions. I have a question. Yes, Gary Marshall. <laughs> I'm afraid uh, I was not looking up. I did not see your finger, John. I saw that he had his finger raised, and I went in and undercut him so that I could get the first question in. <laughs> I know you love to get the first I'm question. I'm very competitive. Yeah. All right, what's your question then? In the scenario where I laugh to the tune of the MASH theme song, mm -hmm. uh, is it in tune? Do I do it well, or is it uh, atonal? In this scenario, you have perfect pitch. So uh, you are able to do it in tune with harmonies, uh, anything you want to well, do. I got a follow-up. <laughs> okay. Is there ever a time where I do the vocal version from the movie, uh, including the words, so it just seems like I'm singing the This gets the along to my that. question as well. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, there is. There is a time, but it's only when someone very close to you has committed suicide and you're at their funeral. I got one more question. <laughs> okay, one more. <laughs> what happens when I cry? Uh, that is a great question. You actually cry tears that when they drop uh, down, they resonate vibrationally into the Sanford and Son uh, theme song. Hmm. Yeah. Does that go for tears of happiness as well? <laughs> no, tears of happiness, uh, they uh, play uh, Here Comes the Bride. What about tears of excruciating pain? <laughs> tears of excruciating pain. Uh, These are the three kinds of tears. Yeah, the, this is the Green Acres theme song, but uh, with the lyrics. Mm. Yeah, John, you had a question. It's a very simple question. Uh, in the in the aforementioned scenario, uh, both verses. How long do you have to keep laughing? Uh, in unless you're at your friend's uh, funeral, sure. Uh, you just laugh the the normal amount that you would laugh for anything. In fact, uh, I'd love to hear you uh, try to laugh. <laughs> 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 Um, I think we learned a lot about that. I do have one question about the first scenario. Look how red his face got. <laughs> it's like yes. he just got back from Bermuda. <laughs> what era Tony Danza? This is a uh, classic Danza. Classic this is Danza. who's the boss? Taxi or boss? No, I'm sorry. This is classic, meaning who's the boss. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. So, uh, and he addresses you as Angela. Fair Let enough. me and, ask and so He addresses your uh, right ear as Angela and your left ear as Samantha. Okay. Does he give uh, the the angel and the devil? Yeah. Do they give advice when you have to make a decision? Or do they just appear there and it's creepy? <laughs> they appear to everyone who's looking at you. Uh, and uh, Oh, I don't see them. No, you don't see them at all. Everybody else, everyone sees, else sees anytime them. Anytime I have to make a decision, yeah. they appear, everybody else. So do I even And they're know miming. That, do I know that they're there? No, no, no. And no one has the heart to tell So me. I never know when this happens. Follow up. Yes. Are they in costume? They are. They're in Halloween costume, but uh, those sexy uh, slutty, angel and slutty angel, sexy slutty. slutty angel. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah, so garter belt. Uh, Danza was a fit man. Fork and tail. Yeah. He, Can I bad. hear them? Oh, uh, yes, you can hear them as, like, slight murmuring. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, you assume that you have some sort of uh, mental disease. Where you, sense. Yeah. So I never figure out through my whole life that this is what's going on. People all of a sudden looking at me strangely, I hear some murmuring. 
And you check yourself into a mental hospital before for I wreck myself into a mental hospital. <laughs> sure, yeah, of course totally you do. <laughs> and you lick it before you kick it, and uh, all of the above. And uh, yeah, and it, it pretty much ruins your life, and you spend uh, your golden years uh, with uh, two danzas. Does uh, boy, you got excited? You do I ever have to make a decision in front of Tony Danza? Great question. Uh, they turn your plight into a TV movie starring Tony Danza. And then you uh, play the angels on his shoulders. So but gonna, nobody tells me see. this is based on my life. No, of course not. You never. You but die not. You just happen that. to get a great job. <laughs> great and, you're, and you're constantly like, I wonder why they would hire a mental patient. Me. Oh, this is after I've gone crazy in the sanitarium. Oh yeah, yeah. You're okay. in the sanitarium. You're in the rubber room, and then all of a sudden you're plucked from what you think is obscurity, and you have a great acting job. That how long does a TV movie last? Oh, the weeks. Yeah, probably. We're like, talking lifetime or are we talking uh, Hallmark Hall of Fame? So a lifetime, yeah, it can last a lifetime. Okay. They, they crack one. that stuff out at lifetime. They got it down to a science. Yeah. 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 So it's more like yeah, it's more like a bee's lifetime. They use a lot of the same scenes uh, <laughs> in the lifetime movies. There's a, the the middle of the movie, it's the same thing every it's time. It's just because really? they all of them have Meredith Baxter Bernie in them. So there's <laughs> there's it's just easy to plug and play. She just Baxter now because she made uh, some discoveries about herself uh, in later years. So, you know uh, what we're talking about, John? Yeah. Some sexy discoveries. No, that sounds great. <laughs> Is there a lifetime movie? Everybody <laughs> loves sexy discoveries. I mean, if there was a channel. I'd tune in. I would watch a movie called Sexy Discoveries or Plug and Play, starring her. <laughs> I think I think that's the subtitle. Uh, the, 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 <laughs> no more Plug and Play for her. Sexy With, Discoveries. It's more like and Rub and, and Play. play. Back to the game. <laughs> oh, here we go. <clears throat> when uh, in the mash scenario. Uh huh. Maybe uh, we should laugh again. When I <laughs> let's save it for a time we really need it. When uh, do I ever laugh in front of any of the cast members of Mash? You do. Uh, TV you, show or movie? Uh, the uh, TV show, but only the after Mash cast members. Oh, so okay. we're talking uh, uh, William Potter. Christopher. I know them by their character names, Klinger, Potter, and, uh, of course, uh, Father Mulcahy. William Christopher. What? <laughs> William Christopher oh, played okay. Father Mulcahy. All right, so, uh, yeah, those three. And how do they react to this? Are they offended? Are they delighted? They say, always nice to meet a fan. <laughs> and how do I feel about laughing this way? Do I enjoy it? You love it. You uh, it it, green, it brings great mirth to your life. It actually encourages you to laugh more often because you're a very sad person. What if I go to a comedy movie and uh, I'm really enjoying it and uh, laughing uh, the Smash theme? Uh, do I do I get thrown out of the movie theater? What happens? People you, get upset. I bet. No, they get upset, but they they don't throw you out of the theater. They escort you to the other theater where Mash is playing in a revival house. Would people like that any better? Of course they would. <laughs> They're trying to watch Mash. Because it's at least all it's over apt. the film. <laughs> people kind of, uh, they hear you laughing to the Mash theme and they nod and go, hey, you know? We get it. If it, if it had to be somewhere, at least here. Another question about the laughing. Is it, uh, do I have the same, like, you know, you have a different uh, uh, length of laughter based on how funny you think something is. Sometimes you think something's a little funny. You mm -hmm. just Asked give and a answered. little laugh. <laughs> I feel like this was the first question. But go ahead. Oh, was it really? Asked and answered. Oh, I well, but, okay, well. <laughs> What's your Gary Marshall spin on it that we want to hear? <laughs> I can't remember the wording of the question. Was it You were every too busy time following you... up your original what? question, I think. <laughs> Look, you got to get in there. <laughs> Are you saying you realize, by the way, that I don't award points just for the questions you ask? No, I understand. <laughs> I understand, but it's I'm trying to. The speedier I get in there with my questions, the more information yeah, I have. Good. I feel like I'm more confident. You're a great player. I'm voting. You're a great player. Quick I don't follow mean, up because I, I think this this does bear uh, okay. a huge amount. Of, it's I know Mr. Mar Mr. Mr. Marshall has a lot of history. Please call me with Gary. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Gary. So nice, uh, has a lot of history with with both, not only Tony Danza, mm -hmm. Catherine Hellmond, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Alicia uh, Milano, uh, Alyssa Wong, Al yes. Alyssa, both Alicia, of them, both yeah. of them. Uh, so, uh, does that do they bring any sort of personal resonance into into this? Because I don't want to be have sort of a weird. There's a there's a question whether or not this guy has a little influence over what happens on my shoulders. If I'm guessing you're... Ooh, you're putting me into this scenario. This well, is we're unprecedented. We're both in the scenario. Tell me I'm wrong. 
You're, I'm sorry, what did you... So we're, both, we're, we're both in the scenario. My, my, he has a sort of prejudicial knowledge of all of these characters, right. having worked with them. Uh, so meaning if them. you both choose... But this choose. is an alternate universe. This is... Uh, what if in this universe I don't even exist? This or, is my uh, question. I became this is my uh, question. a bricklayer. Well, here's, here's what happens, okay? If you both choose this scenario, then Gary Marshall is in the scenario, and uh, he has prior knowledge of Tony Danza and the whole cast, and it kind of ruins it for you because it. you're not special anymore. Got it. However, if he does not choose it, Got then it. you're the only one, and you uh, not only you become the mental patient and you start on the TV movie, but everyone loves you. Got it. But no one loves you if Gary Marshall chooses Fair this enough. thing. So it's time to vote. No, wait. It's, well, okay. All right, here we All, go. I think we should do it at the same time then because one... <laughs> That's right. It's a lot like poker. You want to declare at the same time. All right, so we're going to uh, ask you to vote at the same time. What we'll is the A or B or, or Dance of Tears or what is it? It's... Uh, 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 it's uh, mash Laugh. Mash, mash Laugh. Te- yeah. <laughs> Dance mash of la- Tears. Danza no, it's, laugh. So the it's laugh, uh, laugh Danza. Laugh Danza. So, right. uh, so Have you ever fly Laugh Danza? It's a beautiful airline. <laughs> so hold up one finger for laugh, two for Danza. This is on the radio. Yeah, right? I know, but I'll, I'll judge each it. Other? I'll judge it, and we're and we're gonna we're gonna go five, four, three, nose one, and then vote. Okay. All right. <laughs> now, what yes. was one finger for? One for laugh, two for Danza. Okay, okay? and what I'll about be, the thumb? <laughs> Does not count. Not <laughs> does a finger. Not, does not count. Okay, not so it's got to be the fingers. All right. So on the count, I want you to say it with me. Five, four, three, nose one, sh- and then shoot. All okay. right. Are you guys ready? I'm Mr. ready. Mar- Mr. Marshall? I was. Please call me Gary. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gary. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Mr. Ham? I am ready. All right. Here we go. And five, five four, four, three, three nose one, one. shoot. <gasps> okay, let me describe what happened. John Ham picked. The Tony Danza scenario. And in a surprise upset, Mr. Marshall... I picked the le- I was kind of waiting for you to say, call me Gary. Oh, this I, is a, I think it calls for a Mr. Marshall here. All right, Mr. This Marshall. This is a big moment. <laughs> Mr. Marshall picked the mash laugh. That's right. So a happy ending here for John Hamm. And an unhappy ending for Mr. Marshall because he chose incorrectly, but uh, uh, but I I chose with my heart. You this chose. Is, with I your chose heart. unselfishly. So uh, there we have it. So John, you're our winner. Congratulations. Congratulations. You, you played much. a good game. Thank you. Thank you. I thought so. It all came down to that shooting. I tell you, if you'd only picked the other one, <sighs> well, about, then it, would, it wouldn't have been uh, as good for John in that reality. Number seven. <laughs> This is Comedy Bang Bang. We're here with Jason Manzukas, and we have um, Chip Gardner, who uh, we had a great talk uh, during that song, and everything's cool. Yep. And, no, uh, we're 100% mm. cool, in case anybody yeah. in the audience is nervous. Yeah. So Don't worry about us. We truly are three great friends now. Mm-hmm. Great friends. Yep. Great friends. Mm-hmm. Terrific. I want to talk to you about your campaign, because I. Sure. Uh, it seems like your only strategy that you've had so far is for people to write to someone, like an actual uh, letter... Absolutely. Nothing is more impressive than sitting down at a typewriter and typing out a letter and putting it in the care of the United States Post Office. All this various technology we have today is just fine, but if you really want to impress someone, give mm-hmm. them a hard piece of paper in their mailbox, and that really gets a message across. Is that a euphemism? Is that a euphemism, Chip? Giving someone a hard piece of paper in their mailbox? It sounds like a euphemism. <laughs> well, I didn't mean it that way. If but if really it been... helps me to get the job of honorary mayor of Hollywood for someone to go down there and and just, just, jam, just jam it in there. Hard piece of mail yeah. in somebody's goddamn wet I mailbox. Say, I would say, I would say, go do it, and mm. tell them Chip Gardner sent me. Oh, okay. Have you liked that fucking? You've got Chip Gardner to thank what? for it because he sent me here to fuck you. <laughs> oh. So, so, so part of your, so it sounds like part of your campaign uh-huh. is to advocate people go down to the Chamber of Commerce mm-hmm. and just fuck people. Listen, it's in, not a bad in idea. Your, in your name. Go can down you? to the Chamber of Commerce right there on Hollywood Boulevard. Can you just fuck anyone you want to these days? Okay. Absolutely. Are Such you a good me? question. Scott, like, I'm putting that in the, like, great question. That's in the wind column. column. That's in the wind column. It's mm-hmm. such a great question. Chip, I'm, I'm interested mm-hmm. to hear your answer. Well, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Supreme Court recently ruled on that. Uh, they and, rule. Uh, yep. Uh, and I, I believe they said, yeah, you can you go ahead and you go ahead and fuck whoever you want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And there's no legal uh, thing that anyone can turn to to tell you that, that like, I didn't enjoy that fucking. Well, Sorry. no. Well, as I understand it, and I might be wrong, uh-huh. but, like, it's not about them enjoying it. 
Right. No. It's not about because like when when you're fucking someone, it's about you. It's about uh, do you? It's about you taking what you want. <laughs> mm-hmm. In the name of Chip Gardner, in this instance, hell, yeah. Satan. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa! Hold on, what? hold on one second whoa, because whoa, whoa. I think you just said something that whoa, whoa, I want whoa. to pay very close attention whoa, whoa, whoa. to. Whoa, whoa, whoa! And clock. point out for the listener. <clears throat> whoa, whoa, whoa! Stop the clock. What's that? You said two words. That uh-huh. if people and and maybe people want to rewind yep. here, maybe you just press play right here in the I don't middle know if of you've it. Got that technology. If you just them, joined us. You know what I just realized? Like, coming out of that song, we didn't do, we didn't identify we didn't anything. So yeah. people who just tuned in at this point have literally no idea. They would what's be going absolutely on. bewildered. Yeah. Yes, but you said mm-hmm. two words, yep. and usually I the the combination of which mm-hmm. leads me to believe that you have some freaky freaky things going on. on. I feel about? like we heard the same thing, Scott. Uh-huh. So I think on the count of three, we should say those two words Here together. We go. Okay, ready? One, One two, two, three. Chip, Chip Gardner. <laughs> wow, you guys really are bros. <laughs> Jason, come back. He's lying on the floor. Is, are you having a seizure? <laughs> uh, wow, that was beautiful. Um, no, but but you did say uh, hail, hail Satan. Satan. That's right. Is that part? Is that part of your scene, man? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, one of the things that brought me back from my dark period oh, there was friends and family, of course, but also the, TV the Lord show Satan. Friends? The, uh, the TV the, show friends and the family. The TV show friends actually did help me come back from the brink because I saw that monkey, and I thought. How bad can things be when a, a monkey's got work? But anyhow, uh, hmm. yep, uh, <laughs> Lord Lord Satan was a big part of my uh, recovery huh. and redemption. And uh, mm-hmm. how did you absolutely? How did you first get into that? Well, gosh, I was uh, down at a rock bottom, and I uh, I saw a, a fellow. Was uh, this before or after the Jeep? This was uh, well after the Jeep. Oh, yep. so you'd already been hosting these shows with the mask. I've been hosting the shows with the mask. Now, I just want to. I just want to ask a quick question, and sure. I do want to get to your introduction to Lord Satan. Yeah, the Jeep instance. Was that the first time you attempted suicide? Oh, that wasn't a suicide attempt. I just oh, wanted to get run over. It? Oh, you just wanted to get oh, run yeah, over. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, for what? For, like, for kicks? Just for or? kicks, exactly, yeah. Yeah, just to see what I could survive. Because at that point where kicks just keep getting harder to find. <laughs> <laughs> kicks are getting harder and harder to find. Yeah, Herman's yeah. Herbits? Yeah. <laughs> I was, uh... I was actually pitching a game show at the time called Can You Survive Getting Run Over by... A Monte Carlo was what it was. So I was oh. uh, in, in particular, I was hoping to get run over by a Monte Carlo, oh. but uh, it ended up being a Jeep. And uh, in, in anyway, some ways, you're lucky research. it was a Jeep because of the four wheel drive. Maybe you're right. How so? Well, because those back wheels were able to avoid you. Oh, is that how it works? Yeah. Good. That's any time a Jeep hits anything, the front wheels hit it, but the backs don't. Yep. Is that right? Yeah. That's what four wheel drive used, is. Yeah, I used I'm to work uh, at at uh, Ford. 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 <laughs> Uh, maker of the Jeep. Maker of the Jeep. Ford, Ford Jeep. No, come on. We Jeep come on, guys. You guys are Ford you guys top. are joking around. But we studied the Jeep because we uh-huh. were afraid of it. Know your enemy. Uh, yeah, exactly. Keep your we were close. We were deathly closer. afraid of it, and we considered actually yeah. making a four wheel drive Ford for a while, uh-huh. and we were going to call it the Ford wheel drive. I love it. And that, yeah, and I got paid three hundred thousand dollars to come up with that. You talk too much about money. You do. You talk too much about how much money you make. Do you really think so? Like the story would well, have guys, been. Well, guys, I'll tell you. Totally, one hey, thing Chip, about money. Chip, is, can I can I interrupt you for one second? Yeah. I, I, I just, do, do want to like hear story, this, Chip. I'm sorry. The story would have been totally viable if you had not said how much. That here's where like, I disagree. To put, that, to put the money in is bragging. Here's the where I disagree. The story has value otherwise. Here's where I disagree. I got paid so much money that people should know about that. No, they don't need to know about that. That's the part where you lose. I don't think it's bragging you when you're just man. stating a fact. You lose the common man. When you just say how much money you make. It's not important. It's not bragging. Yes, it is bragging. You don't, how is that bragging? It didn't add anything to the story. Chip, can you shut it? It makes people impressed. Shut up. I know you look like you want to talk, you stupid weirdo. I'm dying to get in there. All right. You know what? I want to hear what he has to say. Let's go. What were you guys talking about? Don't worry about it. Sometimes I interrupt without knowing. What you're talking about? <laughs> we were talking. Well, we were t- we matter. just had a little disagreement. Chip, uh-huh. back to Lord Satan. Yep, Lord Satan. You're in a dark place. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Rock bottom, you said. Uh huh. Uh huh. And the Jeep wasn't rock bottom. That's what I find interesting. The whole facial reconstruction and oh, that uh, was surgery a, that, going around. That was a drag. That was a real bummer, man. Yeah. I know they accidentally drag. gave you sexual reassignment surgery while they were working on your face, and you were like, "I didn't ask for that." I'm not entirely sure. It was an accident. It wasn't my idea. I didn't want it. But mm-hmm. I think it might have been uh, pranksterism on the part of the doctors. But then, yeah. as I understand it, uh-huh. you went and had that 
Uh, not reversed because you can't reverse it, but now you have yeah. both sets of genitalia. Yeah. Well, that's right. I, I Neither of which they call it a side right. by side. side by, they call it a side by At side. The, in the In and Out yep. secret menu. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a side by sider. That's absolutely yep. true. That's well, all you got to say when you go to In and Out, and mm-hmm. they they give you a free burger. Yep. Uh, oh yeah, I get yeah. free burgers all the time over there. Because really? I'm, well, I'm a yeah. side by sider, and that's a rare thing to be. Yep. <laughs> So yeah, that's right. Well, I figured as long as I've got uh, I've got a vagina and it's just as easy to put a penis on there, might as well have both. But anyway, you, uh, ever, you know, I've hmm? never even thought about this. Do you ever put one inside the other? Are you kidding me? I don't think I am. It's in there right now. Wait, Whoa! what? Absolutely, all the time. Now, is that? Let me ask you a question. Yep. Is that for uh, sexual pleasure, sure or it is. is it to have a good line in your pants? Because it looks, yeah. it looks good. Thank you very much. You can Yep. Well, it helps with the pants, but really, it's. I'm just in, in a r- r- rapturous pleasure at all times. Really. At all times, as Lord Satan would want me to be. <laughs> <laughs> of course, he because we have to make the most of our time on this earth. That's the part where a lot of people don't like Satanists, but that's the part that I actually really agree with. Is oh, that God. it's all about instant pleasure and just you know Absolutely. we're make, beasts. Just. <laughs> Do you, do you need to spit all over the microphone and table more? Just, but just to make, just to make this point, and I'm sorry to spit, yep. but I, when I get yeah, really yeah. emphatic, I do. Sometimes. You just like produce so much saliva; yeah. it's insane. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's part of a glandular problem I have with. No, it's you know, good. Please get rid of it all over the table and microphone. <laughs> but when you're on this earth, there's nothing after this life other than hellfire and damnation so yep. well, while you're something. here that is something while you're here you need to make the most of it and you need to be constantly just feeling and experiencing yeah. as much orgiastic pleasure as you can and that's the only part that i agree with um, when it comes to satanists well that's 99 percent of it go out there and get what you want and uh, to hell with everybody else and just pleasure 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 at all times and it doesn't really matter what animals. you do to anyone else no, Th- no, this no. is the only thing that i agree with mm-hmm Yep, that's that's a lot of it right there. Now, Chip, no, yep, I need to know. Okay, what is it that brings you into contact for the very first time with Lord Satan? Yeah. Well, I had lost my first wife. Uh, she passed away. She and I I'm were. I'm so sorry. We were, that is horrible. It news. was terrible. We were playing a game of Houdini in the pool, and Did she, she passed she win? away. No, and she won the game, and but it was in her contract that. Well, Scott, before we go there, I'm going to ask just quick, super quick question, just yep. because I'm sure a lot of our listeners don't know. What is a Houdini in the pool? Yeah, no. I, what I, is that game? I, I just thought that was something everyone knew, and no, I was going to ignore so it. That's, that's, yeah, exactly. That's a, so, oh, okay. you know. Well, no, the game is Houdini, but we happen to be playing it in the pool. Got it. Got that's it, where got you, it. You, you... What is the game Houdini? Does well, you put I... someone in a plastic bag, and, uh, you know, well, first you stab her, and then you put her in a plastic bag and lock her in a trunk and throw her in the pool and see if she can get out. Okay, so that is the game of Houdini. It does take place in a pool. Uh, it doesn't have to take place in a pool. This this time it took place in a pool. Okay. Got it, yeah. got it, got it. Sometimes that locked trunk can go in any number of places. It can go in the ocean. Sure. Okay. Uh, but there's water involved. It can be buried. Oh, it can be buried in the earth. Okay. Absolutely. That's sometimes worse than the ocean. Now, this is sure. is this a game you and your uh, now deceased first wife, I'm so sorry to hear that, yeah. uh, had played in the past where she had managed to escape? <laughs> or were you guys first time players? <laughs> the stabbing, <laughs> rapping, burying... <laughs> You know, this was one of the rare times when uh, the the very first time that we played Houdini, she did not make it out. Hmm. Uh, uh, people play Houdini all over the world, really, and enjoy it as couples. It's a it's a very mm-hmm. popular couples game, and yeah. uh, and uh, it's a party like game. Like scruples, a lot of times. It's like scruples. <laughs> it's a lot like scruples, a lot like Balderdash or Jenga. Mm-hmm. But this, uh, I mean, that's it's just one of those rare freak occurrences yep. where the yep. very first time you try to play it, boom! And the very first time we I played it. I think, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken, yeah. Um, William Shatner played this game with his. With his oh wife. yeah, I remember this. My uh, wife. I remember that. Um, I think you may be right. So you, but you played. Brian this. Jones's butler played it with him. Oh, really? yeah. Is that true? That's exactly right. Oh wow! Brian Jones's butler played uh, Houdini in the pool with Brian Jones. Mm-hmm. So you play it, and it leads to your bottoming out. Yep. That's right. Rock bottom, you say? Because well, of that? No, because I was sued by her family for a wrongful death, and that oh. just uh, you know, it took took my uh, finances. You know the uh, mm-hmm. what you have to prove for that in in just a civil suit? It's mm-hmm. just a preponderance of the evidence. Fifty one to forty nine. It's not like uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt. You're absolutely you know? right. Which that's is why where it's in this case, challenge. just out of curiosity, mm-hmm. in this case, Chip. 
Yeah. Uh, was it close or was it uh, was it without a doubt? My understanding is, is that it was a unanimous finding on the part of the jury. <laughs> got it, got that, it, got uh, it. Yes, it had been a, a wrongful death and that I was the responsible party despite the fact that the coroner ruled it an accident. My friend Don, the coroner. Oh, coroner Don. Coroner Don. Yeah. Ruled it an accident. But anyway, mm. losing all my losing all my wife, of course. Of course. I mean, all of her? You lost all of your wife? I lost all of my wife and that oh. was, of course... Uh, yeah. Uh, I didn't care for that, but losing did all you, the money. Just out of curiosity, did you keep any trophies? Did you keep like an ear of hers or anything? Did you keep anything to like remember her by? You know, uh, I was heavily into her feet, and I do have those. You know what? Mm-hmm. It's something to be grateful for. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I still have her feet to remember her. I by. mean, like I, I have like the letters an ex-girlfriend wrote me. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. where's a where's a person keep those? Uh, those are on the mantle, and uh, they're, they're right on the mantle. As soon as someone comes in, it's pretty much the first thing you see. It's a real conversation piece. I and, hang uh, mine uh, above my uh, rearview mirror. Who's, what do you hang there? Uh, little baby boots. Oh, I see. Yeah, baby no, no. boots. Yeah, yeah, that is, that's kind of the same thing. I'll tell you something. It's not easy to get a human being or even parts of a human being taxidermied. You've mm-hmm. got to, there's one guy who will do it out in international waters uh, because it's... Just chilly. off the coast of San Diego, right? Yep, he's out there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you go out there and you... But he'll stuff anybody. If you uh, someone passes away and you'd like to keep them in your in your house posed in a certain pose, he'll do that. He'll be more than happy to do it. So, and that just... Because I'm curious now, like, is that something you've done subsequent to your wife's feet? I've done it on several occasions, yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So, walking into your... Let's, let's, uh, let's do this. Walking yep. into your home, yep. Chip, like, what can one expect to see? I would love mm-hmm. to take a virtual tour of your home right now. Oh, Absolutely. You walk into the house and uh, you're, you're confronted first and foremost by my beautiful fireplace. And, oh, uh, what kind of a finish is on that? I beg your pardon? What kind of a finish? Yeah, what are we talking about? It's it a, a tile. Is it a wood burn? No, it's a tile. Good old old fashioned uh, tile on there. What kind of house? Right first of all, like, as I approach from the outside, yeah, is it mm-hmm. a Spanish style? Is this a modern home? It's a modern home. Uh, yep, it's based on, uh, on a, a prison in the 19. Uh, was, I believe, a prison of the 1960s that oh. had a, a very unique design for a prison. And it's so you had a home based on that same structure, or you occupy a prison? <laughs> no, no, no. I spent some time in this prison, and I, and I, uh, I loved it. You grew to love it. I absolutely loved it, and uh-huh. I thought it was an interesting design for a prison. And so sure. I, I, had an, I had called in the architect who had done it, and I said, make me a house. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they put a gate around it with gun turrets. and. Yep, that's absolutely right. Mm-hmm. It's right up there in the I've Hollywood seen Hills. This, I've seen this place. It's one of the famous Hollywood houses. Oh, I had it? no idea that you lived there, let alone that you hired mm-hmm. an architect to build it for you. That's yep, fantastic. that's right. Mm-hmm. Now, oh, wait. Yes. I think I know this house. Is this a house that like uh, a number of times people have been imprisoned in, and when they try and escape, they are shot by guards? As a matter of fact, that's right. You know your Hollywood trivia. I do know that. Just that's because absolutely only, right. Only because on a number of occasions, I've, I've had to stop going someplace because traffic is shut down yeah. uh, because there is a quote-unquote prison break. This was just last week. From a home. Too. That's from mainly, a home it's not really trivia when it, it just happened. Well, listen, these people are uh, absolutely not held against their will. These are guests of mine in the house, but if they leave unexpectedly, there's a chance they could get shot. Okay, see, that someone seems in the guard like tower. they are held against their will. There's a real legal problem, though. You don't know the healthcare system. There's a real, you, you know, you have a responsibility to your patients, and you can't just let them leave. Wait, patients? You're saying patients as if they've been a- a- admitted to, like, uh, you're a, you're a, a doctor, aren't you? <laughs> well, listen, I'm a doctor of sorts. I, uh, you know, <clears throat> I, that's what I thought. Yeah, I, I, I am. Because uh, I've heard about the owner of this house. I never realized it was you. Mm-hmm. But I heard about uh, the owner of this house, how he's uh, the doctor in an insane asylum um, that he turned his house into. Huh. And uh, See, I hadn't heard any of this. This is actually really specific. This is really interesting how urban myths get started, because some of this is not entirely true. It, it's okay, not an what, insane what asylum. What am I getting wrong? Well, uh, what happens is that I'll, uh, I'll bring people over who are uh, living on the streets and uh, seem to have uh, nothing to live for, really, and I'll just uh, I'll do my best to, to improve their lives through surgery, okay, uh, various see, surgeries, sur- see, see, surgical see. procedures. So it's not an insane asylum at all. No, it's, but a lot, it's of, more the, of, like a lot a, of the homeless people have schizophrenia. Oh, they have a lot of mental health problems. Absolutely. Because what but I had heard different from an asylum. What I had heard is uh, is that it was a kind of island of Dr. Moreau in the hills. Mm-hmm. I had heard about these experiments that he's yes, referencing. Where you, yeah. you where switch you were, a person's upper half for their lower half. Well, we haven't, uh, believe me, I wish we were that advanced. We haven't gone that far, but we certainly have uh, uh, replaced a man's arm with a coyote's uh, arm, a uh, coyote's leg, or things like that. And we've You've, t- you've turned everyone into a side-by-side as well. We've done oh, a lot of side-by-side stuff going on up there, absolutely. Do you that's, think... That's a, uh, yeah, that's, yep, I'm doing Chip, that for their do benefit. do you think your obsession with these experiments is in some way an effort to find a way to fix your own goddamn face? Oh, believe me. 
And that's how it began, absolutely. I, I bought a, a whole lot of surgical... A lot of the surgeries that were done on my face were surgeries that I did myself. <laughs> Uh, that's how it all began. I bought surgical equipment. I started reading up on uh, skin uh -huh. and bone and you, muscles. And I remember like you, you bought ancient Victorian surgical <laughs> tours. How do you tools? remember he bought that? How do you remember that? This, you there's can't a big remember. Prof there's that's a big not a profile. memory you could have. There's a big that profile not, on him. It is not a memory. In the LA Times. You can't yeah, say, right. I remember you bought ancient surgical equipment because yeah. that's impossible. I remember it's, reading the article about it. The LA it. Times. The LA Times wrote an article about my home. Okay. They came then let me ask you this. Architectural Digest has been over three times. If that's the case, yes. why has it just come out now that there was such a long profile where he... I didn't know this guy! You, how could you not if it was such a long profile? I didn't know that this was the guy. The, I just heard about this eccentric but the, who oh, lived but in the, the Hollywood article, Hills. The article who, didn't mention the game shows? No, 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 no. They kept that out of it. <laughs> yeah, I, okay, I, I told the journalist, let's not dwell on the past. <laughs> I'd like to talk about what I'm up to now. Yeah. The, the surgeries on the schizophrenics and the homeless people. <laughs> got it, got it, got it. What I did think was really weird about that article, though, was that... There were uh, a lot of weird things about that right, article. Side by side to the article, there was another article <laughs> about how all the ex-child stars of the TV show Zap... Yeah, uh-huh. Uh, had all They were all homeless, mm -hmm. living mm -hmm. on the streets, mm -hmm. and how they'd been disappearing. Yep, that was an interesting uh, confluence of events. Those two articles appearing side by side. Like, what a terrible story to hear that those uh, poor children, the once proud warriors in my army, uh, were now living on the streets and uh, suffering through uh, mental anguish and mental yeah. illness. And uh, wouldn't it be wonderful to hear that someone had taken them in and uh, uh, helped them out through surgery? <laughs> It would be wonderful, but, no, but it's just not, it was, not the case. One of the things that I remember about the TV show, Zap, <clears throat> yeah. is that in the show, uh, all the kids would come together, and like a Voltron, and they would mm -hmm. join forces. It was kind of crude CGI kind of uh, graphics, but mm -hmm. they would come together in order to fight an evil. Yeah. I'm just, I just want to make sure there isn't anything going on now where... In your experiments, you're trying to take those children and actually physically make them the Mega Man that they were in the TV show Zap. You're asking me, am I uh, taking first some of, all, of these children who are now adults? First of all, he doesn't even, he's not admitted to taking any of these children, Jason. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. Hypothetically speaking, would there be a case for uh -huh. anybody to be trying to actually build... Surgically, surgically graft build these the Mega Man. Now adult, mm -hmm. ex-children, yep. that's I guess what a lot of us are. Yeah. Ex-children. Uh -huh together into a large Mega Man world. So you're imagining a scenario where some of these children I'm have... not imagining anything. I'm just <laughs> hypothetically restating... Or are you remembering? Restating are you remembering? Jason. I remember. The question on the table is, have I taken all of these uh, adults who were once uh, members of my child army and uh, child actors on Zap up to my mansion, <laughs> which looks like a prison and is guarded round the clock by armed men who will shoot anyone who tries to leave, and am I, in fact, putting horns on some of their heads and talons at the end of their hands and sewing them together one by one to create a gigantic monster uh, you, of, you've, of many arms and legs. You've summarized our query precisely. It's really, it's, uh, you know. It's as simple as that. Well done synthesizing all of this information into one cogent point. And you're asking if I have done this. Perhaps you're surmising that I have done this in service of Satan so that <laughs> Lord Satan may rule supreme over the earth. So that you'd be knights in Satan's service. Or if, mm -hmm. if one was to be. If one was to want Satan to arrive here on Earth, you might need a vessel for him to occupy that is more than human. Well, sure. absolutely, because when are Satan... You, are, are, if this were the case, would you be lobotomizing these children as well so that Satan could uh, take over uh, the corpses a little more easily? Well, it would certainly be helpful to destroy their will, wouldn't it? So that hmm. uh, they would uh, have a very difficult... Because this is... How many different souls are we talking about? Mm. Perhaps 28 different souls. 28 different Perhaps. souls. That Satan would have to simultaneously occupy in order to rule this monster. Huh. Meanwhile, uh, recent medical studies have stated that if you lobotomize a child or an ex-child uh, and give them just the bare minimum of motor functions, that they're actually able to operate uh, machinery and, and their, own bo their own bodies without having much uh, of what one considered 
to be a soul. Yeah, or free will. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Without revealing uh, why, I will tell you that that is absolutely the case. That uh, that absolutely. Well, we won't ask any I'm further not, questions. I'm not going to follow satisfied. up on that. <laughs> I'm satisfied. Your theory is interesting because it would be true that uh, Satan has failed to come to Earth for all this time. It, uh, an argument could be made because in order for him to come here, he would have to inhabit the body of of a single human being who would whose attributes and skills and a single would human not being be would not be powerful enough to take over the world. Precisely. Take a look turn, at that ridiculous movie, uh, The Exorcist. Uh, uh, of, of sure, what value is it to Satan to uh, to inhabit the body of a thirteen year old girl, or, or, the, or, omen. or the omen? Uh, yep. Even more ridiculous. Right. And so, uh, yeah, yeah, the theory might go that uh, it'd be better for twenty eight uh, simultaneous souls to be stitched together in, into a monster that has been created with hmm. extraordinary powers. <laughs> Now you know you know what I think is really interesting is Jason mm-hmm. and I we were talking about this when, when we first met that we we thought we had just met each other but we seemed familiar to each other mm-hmm. and you and I what we didn't talk about uh, at the top of the show is you and I have something really weird in common mm-hmm. which is we're amnesiacs sure um, fr- retrograde amnesia yeah and we don't uh-huh. remember our lives um, when we were young children nope. And neither of us have any record of, of what we did or, nope. or where we've been. I don't have family. No. In fact, uh, all, all mm-hmm. our families uh, basically died when we were very young. So uh, I would assume. I yeah. don't know. Mm-hmm. So we, It's almost as though your memories were stolen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's just a weird fact that I've, I wanted to bring up. Yeah. I've often thought of myself as a victim of memory thieves. And, and has yeah. it ever occurred to you that at some time you might hear a message that uh, flipped a switch for you and gave you commands? I, you know what? I haven't. But I've thought about it a little bit because okay. because I've heard uh, a combination of syllables every once in a while that um, it feels like a tickling in the back of my brain. You know, have you ever felt like Does your brain is being tickled? Okay, see, see, that's interesting. You say that. Does mm-hmm. this happen to you? Do people come up to you mm-hmm. sometimes, like after a show or something you've been doing, mm-hmm. and say, "Man, I loved you on Zap." They say that to me <laughs> literally every day. So weird because I don't know what I it don't means. Remember anything about that no I, I have no idea but um maybe one of these days you know I'll, uh, because people are like what happened to the 28 other people that were on that show i see you and scott ackerman out there and there people, were 30 people on people that show say that to me all the time but, but they say jason the, menzuka yeah, what scott happened ackerman. to the other 28 and i'm like John, not this only is absolutely a hey chip, oh, hey, chip oh, can oh, you shut it for a what second what i have to say up. is very important okay, what i have chip, to say is mm. just shut up oh, shut boy. up you don't know what we're talking about so why don't you just like i feel like i might shut because I feel like you and I have this in common. And I, I guess I didn't realize it, but people all the time are like, "Of the thirty Zap cast members, yeah, the p- precisely thirty. What happened to the other twenty-eight? Because they were, they were not the stars that you and Scott were. Guys, I know you don't like it Shit. when I interrupt, but I Shit. swear to God, I'm, come on, oh. man, your face is leaking. Please clean it up, Chip. I can't control that. Uh, yeah, people say that to me every day. And what what's really weird is you and I talk about this every night right yep. before we go to bed. Right. And about how weird that is. Yep. And we comfort each other. And yep. we say, you know what? One of these days we'll figure out exactly I'm what I'm itching to get in there and just do what I, I can to explain to you. I swear to God, Chip. I feel I like... swear ugh. to God. Okay, I think we're pretty much done with I've, this part, I've got right? something to tell you that's very, very important. You know what, Honorary Jason? mayor of Hollywood, Chip. <laughs> that, I'm going to vote for you. Wait, well, you can't vote. It's not an elected position, but let them know down there at the Chamber of Commerce, when you stop by to fuck them, let them know that Chip Gardner sent you and that he would be a fantastic honorary mayor of Hollywood. Number seven. <laughs> uh, so that was episode uh, number seven on your countdown, and uh, you know what time it is, Paul? I, I, I don't know what time it is. Time for another b- 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 bonus. <laughs> This is the first time that we ever played a little game we call Alive or Dead. Oh, yeah. And uh, Patton and Rob got very confused during it. <laughs> so I wanted to play this clip. This is a bonus from episode 86. Bonus! By Bannon. Bro. This is a new feature that we like to call Alive or Dead. Hmm. What is that? I love, I love this. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, this is a new feature called Alive or Dead, uh, where basically what I'll do is I'll uh, mention some celebrities, and it's up to you guys to figure out if they are alive or dead. And That's a really edgy musical intro for was, a segment called Alive or Dead. I spoke too soon, by the way, when I heard the little that little bell clang in the distance. Yeah. Like, Ooh, thought, and then it oh, turned into metal. Something totally different. Should have been more respectful. 
Uh, basically, because this is uh, the first show of the new year, we're going to play uh, uh, it a little bit differently uh, than we will play it in the future. But this is Alive or Died in 2010. Oh, because we're kind of wrapping great. up great. Uh, the previous year. So, uh, oh, so many last year. There's so, so, well, especially after the bomb, too. Does the, the, does the bomb count? <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. anyone who pre-bomb. was... pre-bomb. <laughs> right. No, anyway. Well, the, yeah, that is interesting because the bomb went off at exactly midnight. So. Yeah, so I guess it's not. I guess that was that was 2011. Just last, okay. I mean, I've, right. just ne- I've never had a year where I've more that last year was the year that I most ran out onto my front lawn and screamed at the sky take me instead yeah just, that's how many people <laughs> like who we, for so who? you know let's play the game first okay. maybe I don't want to run maybe, maybe we'll yeah, yeah. okay alright so uh, I'll basically I'll say a name and you guys confer and, and give me an answer mm-hmm. alright do you think go. that any of these people before we even get into it ever played this game probably wow I hope so <laughs> alright we're gonna start with an easy one okay kind of a softball <clears throat> alright so Dennis Hopper alive or dead 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 Yes, he died of prostate cancer. Did he really? Yes. Uh. In 2010. Oh, wait. And his wife was like at his bedside. Or no, he. what happened is his ex-wife came to his bedside and he was like, get out of here. Something like that. Like he, he, was try- he was trying to cut her out of the will, I think, yeah. before he died. But yeah. he was unsuccessful. I now, think. if you got prostate cancer, that, does that is that imply that you just fucked a lot? And I think it's the opposite. Ran. Yeah, I, I, think I think it implies that I think you did not fuck. I think it's when you don't um, clean it out with you know regular flushings. That, uh, really? Yeah. If you want me to check you later, I'll check you. Wait, yeah, you, yeah, you can clean out cancer by just no, flushing? You got to clean <laughs> by out. By taking monster shits? You got to clean out your prostate. And just, you know, squirt it yeah. by the semen dumps. <laughs> They're all over LA. <laughs> Go to the Every Rite Aid parking lot has a semen dump. Sure, we have a lot of semen dumps. <laughs> we just never got the semen plows. Oh, uh, it's the worst. I, this city is so backwards. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. Uh, this may be a little tougher. All right. Art Cloakey, creator of Gumby. You're a jerk. Alive or died Alive in 2010? Or died in oh, what, 2010. what if he died in like 27? Yeah, I bet he died in like 1941. <laughs> <laughs> if they are dead, all these people died in 2010. So oh. it's not it's not they died okay. in a different year. I'm so. going to I'm going to say alive because I don't remember hearing that one. Okay, Rob? Um, I don't care. <laughs> okay. He is dead. He died in his sleep. Oh, oh. now I apologize to Art Clunky. What's his name? <laughs> uh, Art Cloaky. Cloaky. I really well, should gonna, apologize. I'm not going to apologize because I had hope for him. I wanted him to be alive. I'd like to apologize to the family of the Cloaky. I'll call the, the Cloaky family. Yeah, yeah, call them apologize. personally. Now they <laughs> we got a call from Rob <laughs> Hubel coming in. Who? Now, now they got all the heirs have to fight over the Gumby money. <laughs> Gumby bucks. He died in his run. sleep, though. That's the way to die. That is Unless someone is, like, smothering you with a pillow. <laughs> well, that's what Kenny Rogers says in The Gambler. The best you can hope for is to die in your sleep. And man, and be smothered by a pillow. And be smothered by a pillow. <laughs> Kenny Rogers says a lot of fucked up shit, though. He does, but a lot of it's from the heart. All right, here we go. Number three. Uh, French Stewart. Alive? Hold on. French Let's Stewart. think about this. <laughs> Maybe... He killed himself <laughs> on Christmas morning. Okay, Pat says alive. <laughs> I'd say killed. alive, yeah. I'm gonna say alive. He is dead. He died of autoerotic asphyxiation. No, he did not. Yes, he did. That's not in true. In 2010. That's yep. not... You're making up facts. <laughs> that wow. is true. Sorry. Did All he right. really? Wow. Yeah, he did. I feel terrible. I'll call oh, the Stewart family to apologize. All right. Next up, we have... <laughs> uh, in Stargate. Did, is that how he died for real? Yeah. Autoerotic oh. asphyxiation. Oh, All right. Uh, Dick Wolf, creator of Law & Order. Uh, Alive or dead in, in he 2010. died. I'm pretty yeah, sure he I'll died. Yeah, I'll say died. He is dead, yes. His dick was eaten by wolves. Okay, oh, now wow, I know you're making up facts. Yeah. After he died, did they play the dong dong? <laughs> Ice-T came in to that is, <laughs> figure that out what happened. That's oh, yeah. because, the, well, now, oh, God, it, it, I can't watch any, it's going to be hard because there's that logo at the end of every episode of Law & Order of the wolf howling. Mm-hmm. And I'm and just gonna think. No. I'm just gonna think that wolf is trying to cough up a dick. <laughs> yeah, in the moonlight, like he's choking on it and he's trying to get it out of his throat. I, that I auditioned wolf. for a movie a while ago, and this is not a great story. But um, but the whole movie. <laughs> well, let, hang on, let's settle in. <laughs> let's just settle but, in. Here but, we go. But the whole movie was about these guys that uh, their plane had crashed in the, mm-hmm. uh, and I didn't get the part, so I'm upset about it. But it, <laughs> their plane had crashed up in the woods in Canada in the snow, and they were just being hunted by wolves the whole movie is trying to get away from these wolves it's not a comedy movie it's like a drama movie Mm -hmm. so my audition was me being attacked by so it's literally just me going (laughs) oh god oh oh, ouch ouchie ouchie like just screaming ouchie ouchie may be why you didn't get that job (laughs) if they audition people don't they want to audition you and and see like can he handle the really subtle scene and not 
Anyone yeah. can handle just screaming and yelling. Well, evidently, we I, get couldn't, you on the set. I couldn't even handle that. You couldn't, it, you couldn't they scream. They were like, okay, stop <laughs> no. it. All right, get out of here. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you making fun of this? Uh, <laughs> Enough with your ironic We're going to here. make this movie. If you don't want to be a part of it, you just get out of here. <laughs> Stacy Keach does a scream clinic down at the uh, Hudson <laughs> Theater if you want to go take that. All right, we have a few more here. Let's okay. see. Roger Waters, singer, oh, ex-singer wow. of Pink Floyd. Alive, Fly. alive. Because someone... I know yeah, I was going to see say, him. Yeah, I'm going to see him live. Shows. Nope, yeah. he is dead. He died oh. in 2010. A brick fell on his head. Well, oh the people God. that I know that are going to see him will be very They're disappointed. They're going to be very disappointed. Yeah. yeah, very disappointed. All right, uh, Wee Man. Wee Man. He's alive. Oh, he's very much say alive. He's, yeah. alive. he's, he's, in, yeah, he's yeah, in the yeah. movie Jackass 3D. Yes, yes, no, he died. What? He died trying to copy a Jackass stunt he saw on TV. You're making that shit. Is... Uh, now I don't think any of this is accurate. You know what? I mean, no, I want to Wikipedia. Yeah, no, look it up. I'm looking up everything. I'm going back to French Stewart. <laughs> All right, here we go. LeBron James. LeBron James. Dead. He's dead as a doornail. Um, no, I think he's alive. Okay, he, no, he is dead. He's oh dead. My God. Yeah. yeah, he was murdered by his cousin Kevin after LeBron told Kevin that grown ups sucked. Oh my God. Yeah. I did, well, Sometimes I, I these things pass were, right by you and you don't he notice them. He never visited the set of King of Queens when I was on that show. Nine years, he never visited it. <laughs> he, never, he never once came by? No, never once came by weird. to see his like, cuz? You think he would, like, support him? That's so just at least just to go. What's buzzing, cousin? What's you know, buzzing? Like, yeah, on. it's just hanging. I mean, there. that is That's the least shame. cousins can do That's for the one least another. They can do. That is a shame. All right, a couple more. Here we go. The All little right. girl who plays Lily, the adopted Vietnamese daughter on Modern Family. Little girl plays. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, she's alive. No, she. Um... God, I hope she is dead. She, I hope Rob dead. is right. She finally yeah. died at the age of ninety-six from Benjamin Button disease. Yeah, oh, she God. went backwards. Gosh. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. This at is, least it wasn't from playing Russian roulette with Robert De Niro. That's what I'm most happy. This about. This game is really depressing. <laughs> it really is and shocking, only, and shocking. We only have a couple more. I, I'm going to say it's educational. Oh. Uh, Louis Anderson. Louis Anderson. Mm, 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 mm. Alive or dead? Alive or died in 2010? I, I'm going to say dead. Dead. Totally dead. You guys are right. He oh. died uh, from a fencing accident. He ate a what? fence. Oh, he ate a fence. Yeah. He literally swallowed yeah, a fence? Yeah, it was a really sharp one of those picket like fences. Like a barbed wire? Oh, oh yeah. like, a, so like a wooden fence. Yeah, a wooden fence, yeah. Oh, but it had the little sharp things at the top. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's what... It off. impaled his it stomach. It did yeah. Yeah. internal... Oh. So could he not wait for the for the workman to, to saw the little pointy things off the top? He just... Yeah, oh, he couldn't it. wait. He was like, oh, now. if someone puts something in front of me, I have to eat oh, it. Oh, God. Fuck. Louis. Uh, we have one last one. Jake oh. Gyllenhaal. He is. I didn't see anything in the papers. Yeah, I'm gonna say he's alive. But I thought that about all these people. It's true. Yeah. No, he is dead. Oh, what? No. His dick was eaten by wolves. What? No. Yeah. Why are wolves eating on yeah, why, human dicks? Why are we? Why are we so focused on health care and the bailout with it when there are dick eating wolves <laughs> prowling about? You know what? Thanks a lot, Obama. Yeah, Obama. Everything's Trying to going distract to shit. Us, yeah, we, we're 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 a socialist country. You're letting dick eating wolves running around knocking on our doors. Whole, well, I'll tell you what, I have opposable do. thumbs. The East are Coast able to knock. is buried in snow. The West Coast is buried in semen. This I'll tell ridiculous. you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tuck my dick back between my legs, like in Silence of the Lambs, uh, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and then when a wolf comes around, I'll be like, Phew. "That was your New Year's resolution, <laughs> though." Yeah. To keep your dick tucked. Yes. All right, and that is how we play Alive or Dead. Wow! It's, Wait, oh. more more music we on the way out? out. Yeah, yeah we we gotta, it's uh, our exit theme. Yeah. Is this band alive or dead? <laughs> ah, funny. It was funny. Funny to play tricks on people. You know what's funny about tricks mm -hmm. is that someone gets tricked, mm -hmm. but uh, and the, you're the trickster. The listener gets treated. Oh, it's I a paid trick. for the bill. It's a trick and treat. Mm -hmm. Please don't soap my windows. <laughs> Number six. Pretty much. Oh, oh my God! What a loud! Oh, that is extremely loud. Somebody's dropping by, I think. That's some. That's a loud knock. Ooh, gosh. Maybe a giant. Who is some a, sort of who goblin? Is Hello. Come on in. Who? Who is Hello? that there? Hello. How you doing? Good. Uh, are you a neighbor of mine, sir? Who are you? Yes, I'm a neighbor of yours. I was wondering what was going on in here. I'm sorry, Scott. I let him in. Oh, Bob's here. I've been sleeping in your foyer underneath the boot changing bench. <laughs> it's a little rustic here, yeah. I have a boot changing bench. You uh, just use that for changing boots? Yeah, that's its only use. Good for you. Uh, this is, let me just explain, Colin. Yeah. Uh, Bob uh, Duca here is my ex stepfather. Devoted ex stepfather. He was married to my mother for oh, seven um, glorious months. Wow. 
when I was 33, I believe. And, uh, That's not awkward. No. That's not awkward. He keeps popping back up in my life. Not awkward. No. I'm, I'm sorry. When, we, when you invited me over here, you told me that, that we were going to see your family. That's right. I don't think this that, is that, that a, that's necessarily ap- qualifies the as apple your of my eye. I don't, this doesn't feel this like this is the only your possible family. thing that could qualify. What did as you my say? Family. Did you say seven months? Seven months, yeah, it, not a long time. You guys are not family. I was already telling you. <laughs> Wait, so Bob, you invited him? You've been sleeping under my my boot changing under your boot changing bench. And I'm sorry I didn't tell you before, but I didn't want to get caught. <laughs> and you you took a stroll and met one of my neighbors and in well i was relieving myself in your bushes and i saw this this uh man who was looking around and uh yeah i, I can saw, spot I, when a man wants to find fellowship i thought something interesting was going on in those bushes you know turns out you were alone that's not what i expected i thought something hot was going on now yeah. sir you're wearing a large something. trench coat yeah are uh huh? did, you're wearing a large trench coat buddy it's raining it's wet out. Oh, I, uh, Cake Boss, do you think this is the uh, yeah the man that El Chupacabra went out to go? Uh... M- well, no, because he's in here now. El Chupacabra's is outside. It's very wet. Well, it's a four bread bag day. There was some guy, uh, some guy following me outside, and I kneecapped him. Uh, oh, well, that's too bad. Uh, well, um, yeah, you're the first gentleman I've met who has one of those uh, retractable uh, uh, like beating daredevil weapons. canes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. A yeah. lot of the people you meet who have those are not gentlemen, but I am one. <laughs> what is your name, sir, again? Don DeMello. Mm. How do you do? Theatrical director. Oh, you, you're a director. That's right. Oh, Colin, uh, oh. you're as an actor. Oh, are you? Yeah. I have no use for you. I, uh, okay. I, I direct annually the uh, Radio City Christmas Spectacular. Oh, That's in New York oh. City? In New York City. Yeah, uh, then you, I, we're not Unless you're a together. child or a fat Santa Claus or, more importantly, a beautiful, gorgeous rocket. I'm only 50 hours away from being in the Amateur Usher Guild. Huh? I seat people at plays in exchange for free shows. How many hours do you need to be in the amateur Russia Guild? They keep raising it. Jeez. I was not aware of this, any of this. Amateurs. What do you need to be a pro at it? Well, I, uh, I, 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 I have a, a, a pen light that I'm able to see tickets in, and uh, I have a, my depth perception is such that I also am able to walk downstairs now. Oh, you and got so that I, fixed. Oh, yep. Congratulations. What happened? Uh, I, I my, apparently wasn't... Uh, the trajectory of my eyeballs wasn't uh, right. The arc that right. the cornea formed. Right. Right. And I wasn't looking down. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you got to look. Threw down. off the depth perception. Right. That's been fixed, though. Yes, it's been fixed. Yes. Um, there's yeah, some I'm, water right in front of you, by the way. Feel free to. Huh? There's some water. Oh, a glass of water right in front. Very of Very far away. Depth <laughs> perception <laughs> is very important for the rockets. It's one of the things that we test them for. We throw things at them, and we see if they can deflect it. They deflected how? Yeah, we throw balls at them. We run the girls through a lot of different tests. A lot. Because a lot of girls want to be rockettes. And, uh, Would you like to borrow my kerchief for that saliva coming out of your mouth? <laughs> sure, that'd be great, yes. I have been told I'm a bit of a drooler. That's a good... Uh, that's... That's some good ushering. You know, I I, yeah. I know uh, some dinner theater uh, people that are, are always looking okay. for, uh, uh, do you have any uh, uh, table waiting experience? Um, no. Well, I, I was, uh, I used to be the guy who cracked an egg in a genuine Caesar salad. That, okay. <laughs> they hired I you just for that? Uh-huh. Well, I guess with the death depth perception he wouldn't be handling yeah. cutlery and, and, yeah. and things of that no. nature that sounds like a bowl of salmonella <laughs> well it, well no, I'll, I'll see what i can do for your yeah that would be that really, would be really nice to get him out of my hair i love the like, theater i, I think know. you three should team up i mean you have okay. uh no <laughs> well, you're I, really I, quick to agree i <laughs> i mean I you're know. an actor you're a director you're an I usher will, and i'm free you know, this mm-hmm. is like a new Enigma Force 5. This is, you know, a, a dream team of, you know, I mean, what what could you guys call yourselves? Uh, let's see. Ush Director. Uh, that's, uh, that's really good, but maybe we any. can improve upon it. I don't <laughs> want any part of this dream team. There's no girls on it, no beautiful girls. Yeah. So how how about the pretty. pod dwellers? Because we're three peas in, this, in a pad. In this podcast. 
No. <laughs> no Bob doesn't know what a podcast is. He, <laughs> oh. he he barely knows he's being recorded. Oh, oh, okay. Do you, you do know that this has gone out to several people, and people have, have listened to these several uh, appearances, people. these appearances you've made. Several, several people across. Several people. Yeah. The which ones? On the interwebs. The, every time you drop by. Is it the volume of my voice that's a problem? There Too is loud? no. There is no problem. <laughs> we haven't s- established there's a problem. Oh. What are you talking about? Okay, so uh, Don, Don's your name? Don DeMello, theatrical director. <laughs> Don, tell, tell me a little bit about that show. It is the Christmas show here. Sure, I would love to terrific. hear. Oh, How long boy. have you been doing it? I've been doing the Christmas show now 18 years. This wow. is my 18th year directing the Christmas show. Before that, I was directing an all-nude review in Midtown for several years before that. And then... Uh, some of the girls I knew there were between 5'6 and 5'10, and that's what you got to be to be a Rockette. They graduated to the Rockettes, and I went with them. Yeah. Wow, they dragged you along. Huh? Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous girls. <laughs> what is the uh, turnaround for uh, said gorgeous girls? How many years? How many years can you be a Rockette rock before head? you burn out and fade away? Oh, if you're sweet, if you stay sweet. You can stay in the show for several years. I don't see that happening. I really don't see that happening. You can't start making demands. You can't start putting your foot down. You got to be real nice and sweet. You got to be a nice girl. We're looking for nice girls. You got to keep your body nice. (laughs) Wow. You got to keep those legs real nice. (laughs) It's all about the legs. (laughs) You are disgusting. The Human a, being, seemingly. It's, uh, uh, may I ask not how unlike old? some of my directors uh, before. Really, you, yeah, you, you come is, across this is, the casting is, couch. It is common. Yeah, oh, it's, it's a common tale. Sure. You guys ever see the Christmas show? It's real terrific. Yeah. The girls come out and they do those high kicks and those legs are going up in the air. Beautiful, beautiful. I tried leg. to watch the Rockettes once, but the uh, kicking line induced a seizure. Oh, I'm so sorry for you. Oh, I enjoyed it, but they you asked did. me not to return. Oh, oh, yeah, we can't have that. It's distracting because there's a lot of kids in the audience because they want to see the Santa Claus and the camel and the live nativity. And, you know, that's all fine. But for the daddies out there. Oh, that was another thing. That's that, why we have the girls. The camel bit my cheek. Yeah. Oh, sure. That happens. Is that a common? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. Well, you know, uh, there have been several times where the animals have attacked the baby Jesus. And we just go, I'm standing in the booth. I go, blackout. We got an animal attacking the baby Jesus. Blackout. And do they give you a blackout? Sure. They, well, they are, I get a hair finger on that. It happens so frequently. Yeah. They're ready for it. And, and is there an understudy? An understudy for what? For the baby Jesus? Yeah. Yeah, we got six or seven babies back there. Oh, really? well, that's yeah. good. A lot of babies. I mean, they've got a big budget. So is it true that, that you yeah. coat the nativity babies in camel sugar before the show starts? Well, this has turned into an inquisition of sorts. That's never been found to be true, and why would we want the camels to eat the babies? I mean, for crying out loud. Why would Are you, you want the camels to eat the babies? doesn't make for compelling theater? Well, I mean, look. Sure it does. I mean, I'll, I'll concede that. I if was at West Side Story across the street just now, and when uh, one of the dancers dropped oh, yeah. another dancer, the, the jolt of electricity that ran through the audience, like they were seeing something live and real. That's yeah. what you're after. That well, was my argument you know. for when I had a seizure. I said that I could ra- – I, I said, listen, I don't know if you remember this. I said, I, just about anything can give me a seizure. I can do this on demand, and I guarantee your guests a very memorable experience. I wouldn't mind that, you know what, having a Santa Claus. If you, could, if you, if you looked a little more like Santa Claus – Getting you in the Santa Claus suit and having you have a seizure in front of all the children like that. Uh-huh. And then, because you know what? This is the thing. If anything goes wrong in the show, mm-hmm. we bring out the girls. Anything goes wrong, we say cue the girls. May girl. I ask how old those sweatpants are that you're wearing? <laughs> oh, I didn't even notice the sweatpants. These oh. are my lucky sweatpants. I wear them every Christmas season throughout the entire run of the show. I didn't realize Carhartt years. made sweatpants. Yeah, these are work sweatpants. Yeah. I think those eighteen years. Those have just been. I think. I, I think they're just very soft work pants. Yes. I think they just certainly you wash them in the off season. It doesn't look like he does. No, because they're they're building up luck every year. Yeah. You better hope you don't get PE teacher leg in those sweats. What's that now? Uh, it's a rash. It's a fungal, fungal-based rash that a lot of physical education teachers get from wearing the same pair of sweatpants. We had a girl who got a rash on her legs. I says, "Get the fuck out! We don't need you with your horrible rashy legs. This show is all about legs, all about legs." And what was that? What was that dancer's name? Her name was Irene, 
And as far as I know, she's dead. I don't give a crap about her. I says, your fault for getting a rash. Get out. Yeah. It's a tough business. Broadway is very, very, very difficult. Oh, it's really tough, yeah. Absolutely. You got to keep your body nice. You got to stay sweet. You got to keep those legs real nice. I don't want any back talk. No back talk. Kill the girls. No. And blackout. I don't think... <laughs> Do you think he? I don't think he realizes there there are no girls here at the the podcast. Yeah, I, there are no women uh, here yet. That's a real problem. I could get you a bunch of girls. Could you? Sure, I could. I could get. We got. We got. Look, here's how it works. We got eighty girls at all times ready for the show. Oh, we only need thirty six on stage at a time. That means we got all these girls in a holding pen with the other babies <laughs> backstage and the extra camel and the extra camel sugar and you. They, they, yeah, they got a bucket of camel sugar. And a couple of goats, swing he goats, admits we call the them. the camel sugar now. Yeah, he admits we got it. him. We, we, could we drag yeah. that out of him? Yeah, this is like a great courtroom drama. This is. We, and we, got, we got you into cross-examination. <laughs> All right, look. I, yeah, sure. Occasionally, it's nice when things go wrong in the show, so you just can bring out the girls. <laughs> and I don't care what goes wrong. Some Do I plant things to happen in the show that are mishaps so we can bring out the girls? Every once in a while, sure I do. I've, as a matter of fact, I've never seen that show not have a mishap in it. And well, hey, then thank you very much. That's me doing my job. Do I sometimes make sure the guy doing Santa Claus eats something that's going to make him double over in gas pains? So I can say, bring out the girls. <laughs> sure. I mean, I've, I don't know. I've never really seen it, but is the show different every... Is it different year to year? A little bit. Can you talk more about gas pains? <laughs> oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> now we're in Bob's field of expertise. You know, once we, when we hire a Santa Claus, you know, I just get to know him. But really what I'm trying to do is find out his weaknesses uh -huh. so that I could, you know, uh, if he tells me how oh, I got a terrible sensitivity to gluten, I'll make sure he has some gluten. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Right before the show. So he sure. goes out there and he's incapacitated and we get to bring out the girl. I'm right. I'm right here, sir. You don't need to get so close to me. <laughs> anyway, that's what I do. Number five. That's right, number five, and this is from episode 106. Let me set up this clip just a little bit. The Cake Boss, Buddy yes. Veles Velastro. Velastro. Yes. He comes on the show every once in a while. You know yes. his uh, show on the Learning Channel. Yes. Cake and uh, we found out that he had been bitten by, and remind me, Paul, as a listener of the show, you, he had been bit, bitten by, first of all, a cake bug. First he was bitten by a cake bug, regular cake bug. Which yeah, a regular the, cake right, bug. <laughs> yeah, not a radioactive one. A lot of people assume a radioactive cake bug. <laughs> yeah, Just a on. regular cake bug. He gained the power of the second sight. He could see mm. the future. Mm -hmm. Then he was bitten by a cake scarab. During his travels in Egypt. Well, he made a, uh, a, a cake for an Egyptian fellow. Right. Uh, I believe it was a pyramid cake. Right. Um, for a guy who was uh, was going to die, an Jewish man who was going to and die. And he wanted to be buried in his pyramid yeah. cake. Yes. Right. And he was bitten by a cake scarab. And right. uh, that uh, gave him the ability to communicate with the dead, mm -hmm. including uh, people we found from out fiction. Yes. People from fiction, dead as long as they fiction. had died in those works of fiction. Yes, yes, yes. Which includes. Or, <laughs> yes. or they, if it is reasonable to assume that they have <laughs> yes, died yes. since. So, so if, for example, Huck Finn. That's right. That At was this said point, in the 1800s. Yes, by this point, he would be There's no dead. way he'd still be alive. We found out earlier in this episode mm -hmm. that Chewbacca had died because he died in one that's of right. the <laughs> Star Wars novels, that's which right. were canonical. That's right. And. Uh, <laughs> Buddy was talking to Chewbacca, yes. who is in fictional Wookiee heaven. That's right. That's all you fictional need to know. Fictional Wookiee heaven. That's all we need to know. All you to need set to know about clip. anything. <laughs> all right. So let's hear number five. Number five. We're trying to communicate with Chewbacca to see if he ever slept with any famous celebrities. Can I ask a question of my own? Sure. How did that guy ever get permission to kill off a major character in the Star Wars universe? It, it made big news, and people were crying, and uh, he, he dies a hero's be. death. I should hope so. Uh, Who I is crying? I should hope he didn't just get hit by a car. <laughs> Space car. His cholesterol was sky high. <laughs> <laughs> he just had a heart attack. <laughs> Much like Macho Man Randy Savage. Oh, R.I.P. <laughs> some people say he committed suicide. Randy Savage or Chewbacca? Debt, some debts. Chewbacca. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> All right, so we're trying to communicate with Chewbacca, but I guess we could communicate with anyone who's not one of the droids. Uh, we should also ask Chewbacca about the droid cake that you made at yeah, one point, if you ever heard about that. See so if he's familiar. So you're in your trance. Um, I'm in my trance. And uh, you're, you're in the Wookiee heaven. And we're I try- am you're trying to find fictional che- Wookiee heaven. And you're trying to find Chewbacca. And let's uh, see if you can find him. Oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> it's relatively easy. I was afraid we were going to have to go through hey, a long build again, up for that. He's famous, so it's, yeah. uh, he's not hard to pick out. <laughs> he, it's like, who in, this, very tall, who in this room is Louis Gossett Jr.? Well, it's him, because he's famous. <laughs> and everyone else is white. Yeah. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Anyway, <laughs> Chewbacca, you remember me from last week. Uh, we talked, we've been sitting here for a week. <laughs> <laughs> you remember we talked we got things got heated we challenged each other to a duel uh still on by the way i will still meet you on the field of honor at dawn uh your second is the wookie that i've never heard of from the star wars thanksgiving special or whatever well, it was, was a called. christmas special yeah i think you'll find that it was a thanksgiving special i'm in a trench <laughs> Anyways, Chewbacca, these guys have some questions for you. I will be the conduit from this world to fictional Wookiee heaven. Uh, what are your questions? Speak, mortals. Andy, you had your question. I just, uh, hi, Chewbacca, it's Andy Richter. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can we find out if that means anything to Chewbacca? I'll ask him. Chewbacca, are you familiar with Andy Richter? Oh, you are. What? What? They canceled it too soon. I agree. Andy yeah. Richter controls the universe. Is he seeing into the oh, future of the Conan show? I would have, <laughs> I would have pictured him more to be a Quintuplets fan. But <laughs> oh, I, I, He heard that. He's insulted. Oh, I was just kidding. <laughs> no, just Chewbacca. because Wookiees have He was tradi- kidding, too. Oh, Chewbacca. <laughs> oh, that was great. I would high-five you. But I, I cannot reach into a different realm. True. Also, he would probably cross you because he's eight feet tall. Right, right, right. Well, anyway, Chewy, uh, if I can call you Chewy. He says he is allowing it. All right. Thank you, Chewy. Um, I'm wondering, uh, since you did enjoy such a, uh, you know, a, 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 such fame and renown, if you ever had the opportunity to uh, have sex with any celebrities. Oh, he says that's rather an inappropriate question, and oh, no. he loves it. Oh, <laughs> oh, Chewy. He's a bit of a freak. <laughs> Chewbacca, will you answer this rather imper- personal question uh, with all candor and salaciousness? All the deets, man. That's oh. what we want is all the deets. All the deets, Chewbacca. Oh, you don't say. Really? All right, I'll tell them. He had a four-way with Natalie Wood and Rowan and Martin from Laughing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. Wow. Uh. Also, the ghost of Montgomery Cliff watched the whole thing. <laughs> wow. Did they know he, that the ghost of Montgomery or this was when he was alive? They but, knew it. They contacted a medium to have a seance so they oh. could get the ghost of Montgomery Cliff to be in the corner watching and maybe taking care of some business, if you know what I mean. Right. Hmm. Now, did some cakes. When, <laughs> In a sexual Please. situation, <laughs> did Rowan and Martin still play their sort of persona of the aloof straight man and the sort of goofball? They switched personas. They were the same personas, but they just they each took on the other persona of the other person. I think you get what I'm saying. That about must, it. God, that that must be fun for them. It is hot. It, they considered it a... Oh, my God, here they are. Hello, Rowan and Martin. They're there, too, in, Wookie, in fictional Wookiee heaven. How did you guys get in fictional Wookiee heaven? Oh, I see. They saved a Wookiee's life in a future Star Wars novelization. <laughs> <laughs> so they were allowed into fictional Wookiee heaven. Yes. The because most... they would be roasting in hell otherwise. Otherwise, they would surely be roasting in regular hell. Wow. Is that, is that fair to other species to call it regular hell? I think so. We're kind okay. of in charge. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's from our perspective, too. That's true. That's you know. true. We're the only people who know how to use tools. Although, I guess chimpanzees have used tools, so maybe uh, not they like, might take some umbrage not, with that. Not store-bought tools, just oh. sticks and stuff. 
<laughs> that they fashioned into tools. Yeah, twigs yeah. to eat termites. That doesn't count. Yeah. They don't. They don't have money to go to a Ace and buy a screwdriver. Wait, how come birds have money and chimpanzees don't have money? Birds are smarter than chimpanzees. All right. All right. I don't think that's technically They're related true. to dinosaurs, the smartest creatures that ever walked the earth. <laughs> oh, man, man. <laughs> What's smarter than a walnut? <laughs> Two walnuts. <laughs> I know that riddle. <laughs> you may pass. So, did we answer your question? Sure, that's pretty good. Any others? Yeah, well, the Chewbacca's, any other famous people that you slept with. What? That seems crazy to me. All right, I'll tell them. Okay, who do we got? Dina Lohan? Dina Lohan. Is that a person? She's, yeah. She's kind Who of a wookie herself, Who? in a way. That's really? Do you know Lindsay Lohan, Cake Boss? Yeah, the actress. That's her mother. What? She has a mother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is her life so horrible? <laughs> <laughs> does, does the mother not care about her at all? Well, you know, maybe maybe it's because <laughs> Lindsay is part wookie. Oh, I never considered that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why she's that. not fitting in in this planet. That's why she's so tall and hairy. <laughs> right. <laughs> Can I ask? Can I ask a question of Chewbacca? Yes, yeah, Chewbacca has time for one more two-part question. Oh, you got it! You snuck it in there, Scott Ackerman. <laughs> but he already said he would. He did. He agreed to it. He's smiling at you from fictional Wookiee. Heaven. I'm smiling at him down from regular Earth. He can she. Chewy, two-part question: Did you ever have sex with Han Solo, even in college? Second part of the question: What did you think of Buddy's cake? Of the droid, the droid cake that he made that we talked about on a previous episode. He says. That is not two parts. That's <laughs> two separate questions. <laughs> hey. He's nodding and saying, that's true, Angie Richter. <laughs> but he'll take still... the second question first. Okay, great. He was charmed by the android <laughs> cake that I made <laughs> where C3, where R2D2 achieved sentience and mm. then had to be destroyed by eating. Can I ask, based on that question, um, follow up question, is there a sentient cake droid heaven that that cake resides in? Of course there is. Can you peer into the future before he asks or answers my question about Han Solo? Oh, okay. Can you Here's communicate the future or into a cake droid? It's a cake droid Sentient heaven. Sentient cake droid heaven. Can you communicate the with the cake that you murdered? Okay, let's take a look. Not the potato to the cake boss. Mini tranche. It's a very mini tranche. All right, here I am. Here I am in sentient droid cake heaven oh there's only one guy here <laughs> oh, the only time it's ever happened this this is awkward uh are you mad at me well he's just saying beeps and boops i don't know what he, i don't know your language he's got to be happy to have a Wait, visitor how, how come luke skywalker can understand r2d2 and you can't understand i'm not luke boops. skywalker okay well take the time to learn if you're gonna murder something where am i supposed to learn it i don't live in a world where we have robots that beep and boop for a language well look in the empire strikes back R2-D2 beeps and boops, and he gets responses from Luke Skywalker. I'm sure you could translate those based on Luke Skywalker's responses. I can extrapolate from Luke Skywalker's responses. It's the but code I'm, is right there. But I'm the Luke Skywalker in this situation. Empire I don't Strikes Back is the Rosetta this, Stone I, look, of your I language, of the beep and language. This ghost of a robot cake is saying to me. Well, now you don't because you didn't take the time to learn. And now it's too late. Uh, I hear the flaw in your logic. Okay. This isn't a robot. It's a robot cake. Sure. So that language does not apply. He's got his own system of language. Wait a minute. You're saying that this is a droid cake language? He's the only one of his kind. A sentient droid cake? And I murdered him! <laughs> oh, no. By eating him, he was delicious. Oh, of course you made delicious it. Delicious cake. Yeah. I shouldn't have used so much cinnamon. He never would have come to life. <laughs> You've never made that mistake again. <laughs> never again. I've banned cinnamon from the cake kitchen. Anyway, sorry I, I murdered you. <laughs> cake what robot, if, goodbye. What if somebody <laughs> wants a snickerdoodle cake? What are you going to do? I send them down the street. Oh, my gosh. To cake comp troller. <laughs> <laughs> Number five. Oh, man. What a clip. That was crazy. That was crazy. Cray. Oh, that shit, Cray. Paul, you still have not been uh, represented on this uh, no. top no, ten No, no, no. It's, uh, I guess... I don't know. I guess my, my appearances on the show are mostly limited to this sort of thing, mm -hmm. where we're just talking about clips. Or we're just rapping. We're just rapping like a couple of bros. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. I'm so sorry. 
Well, we'll uh, hopefully there's still four more clips to go. Hey, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Number four. Our second anniversary episode. Happy anniversary. Thank you so much. You're uh, welcome. Nine months ago. And um, <laughs> you, sir, are actually in this episode. Me, Paul F. Tompkins? Yes, you, Paul F. Tompkins. When did that happen? This was the second anniversary wow. uh, episode. And you- uh, this I guess w- I just stopped by to say happy anniversary. Thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. Nine months too late. Um, I've been in the clip. <laughs> <laughs> Number four. And Reggie, what's your favorite soda? Well, my favorite soda is an Arnold Palmer. It's <laughs> not really a. That's no soda. That's it's, in it's fact two favorite, non-sodas. It's a not soft drink. It's my favorite soda, though. It's a soft drink. Mm, okay, well, everyone's entitled to their favorite soda. Yeah, I don't have a soda, so that's the best I can. Everybody's entitled to their favorite soda. Now, Bisco. Bing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who's that laughing? Every kiss begins with K. <laughs> what? Well, hold Whoa. on, folks. Oh, my God. Who's that? You know who that is. Hi, everybody. Even it's I me, do. Hugh Hauser. Uh, Hugh Hauser. Of course I do. Exci- Hugh Hauser. Now, uh, Mr. Hauser, I've heard you on this show many times. And of course, I watch your program at home. I've never met you before. This is very exciting. So you've heard me before now, but this is actually the first time that we're really meeting. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Wow, that is just fantastic. It really is. It's a pleasure. To meet you. And what is your name here? My, my name is Pooh. Here and everywhere, my name Did is Did you Paul. say Pooh? My name is Pooh? <laughs> well, no, I think I said So his say, name is let's Pooh. Back up, let's back up the show. Here Pooh we go. Paul. Trees have dicks. I came here because I wanted to help you find California's gold, and I, I think I found just the way to do it. Oh, okay. Because I took a visit down to the beautiful Large Hadron Collider. In wonderful Lake Geneva, Switzerland, California. <laughs> and I found, that's where I've been the last, oh gosh, I don't even know what yeah, time is anymore. You haven't been on in uh, three, four months, five months maybe. It may be that here in this reality, but to me it, it, it seems like it could have been 500,000 yeah. light years. How do, you know, how do you know about reality? Yeah, are you talking about alternate universes and stuff? Now hold on, I don't know anything about that. Are you talking about string theory? What? I may not know what that means. <laughs> well, I'm right there with you. <laughs> okay. Well, I, yeah, well, I walked in, and we, they showed me around there at the Large Hadron Collider where yeah. they take these teeny, tiny, little, little, they're not even, they're smaller than a person. Uh-huh, of course. And they're even smaller than a little mouse, but they're inside everything. You're talking about atoms? But even they're inside of those. That I learned subatomic particles. There are subatomic particles smaller than a little mouse. Smaller than a little tiny mouse, and even the things that that's are inside the, of it. That's the smallest thing that I can think of. It's a tiny small, mouse. It's the smallest unit of thing. Yes. So what happened to you at the hadron collider? Well, I entered a whole different, a whole bunch of different places. Because what happens is when they collide it like that, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you just. There, it turns out that you can that instantly at that moment it's the it's the big bang all over again and there's just no, hundreds not. of billions of different Common worlds bang bang. and there's bigger numbers after that and yeah. bigger numbers after that and there's different there's different hules going around different hule houses in, in different California well, because I walked right into the collider and I got. <laughs> I got I got punched by two of the little things coming at the same time, just faster than a bullet and smaller than a mouse. Two of those subatomic particles crashed into you, and it caused ripples in our reality. Is that what you're trying well, to say? Well, it caused rip. That's a. I think that's what happened because I'm here right now, but I'm also everywhere else at the same time. What? Do you I think don't... that all of your alternate Hugh Hausners have strayed outside of California? Well, now hold on. I, I don't be, know. I never everywhere in all my adventures. I never left California at all. That's all. You mean but to you tell said me everywhere. there's something outside of California? You said everywhere, which implies that there has to be something outside California. If something has a border, there must be something outside that border. Well, there's an infinite number of Californias that are out there. But I when know you that. step oh, outside of California, you don't immediately walk into California. Now I understand why That's he what? seemed confused when I talked about alternate universes. Hmm. Hmm. You're saying there's alternate Californias. That's very. There's specific. nothing but an endless number of California. Right, but but do you understand that California exists as part of? Oh, I don't. Uh, I don't understand much of it. I think that it's a whole big mystery, if you ask me. Well, wait, have you, so you understand? You understand this idea of? I only show. I only understand what they showed me right in front of my eyes, and then mm-hmm. what happened when my eyes split into a thousand different stars? 
And and did you ever meet one of these alternate Hulhausers? Well, sure. We went to lunch together, and we just asked each other questions. Right. And then, <laughs> what did you find I out sa- about him, and, and vice versa? Well, I sat. Well, I sat down with him, and we we like we found out that we both don't know which kind of sandwich it was we're having, but they were both good. Was it the same sandwich, or you ordered something different? Well, well, no. But we ordered an infinite number of sandwiches and oh. ate them all at the same time. So every version of you is having lunch at the same time. Well, yeah. <laughs> it would seem like yeah, some, Scott, some would, idiot. would make different choices, but you're, you're saying you're on a strict schedule, I guess. Well, oh no, the world is always different, but there is never a sandwich to beat that Larchmont sandwich shop, which I go down to <laughs> in Larchmont, every California. Every time I inhabit a universe. No matter what California you're in, you will always go to the Larchmont sandwich shop and mm. get that same sandwich. Do you get the same sandwich every time? Well, I get the Turkey Pesto Club. So you figured it out, what kind you have. <laughs> and there. Yeah, so every universe, every, that's the only two things that are in common in every place I found out, is mm. lunch is always there, and it's always every day, and it's always California's goal. Man, I would love to meet some of these other Hules. I bet there's one who's bald. I bet there's one who, like, wears, uh, who's, like, goth. You know what I mean? I bet there's one with a mullet. Is that true? Know? Do they look different, any of the Hules? Like, they've all made different choices in well, their sure, lives. Well, sure, there's a little fat Hule who speaks oh. it. Who, who who speaks Armenian? And then there's a there's a there's a big old hule who's like a horse. Wow, what like half mean? horse, half like hule. Well, no, he's a, he he has a little maze there on the island of Crete, of California. Yeah, got it. And he lures people in, and he's half horse, and then he's half hule. Like a hule he's like a, Yeah, hule he's, he's he's half hule and half I'm, a minute hule. He's, he's like Pat Minotaur. Yeah. Or is it more of a, a Senthauser? <laughs> well, uh, well, well, now what's the now what is that? Well, it's a half man. Ha- it's a half horse, half Hulhauser. Yeah. Okay, but where does a Senthauser come in? Is that a is that like a wheat penny? I think. <laughs> well, one hundred of them make a Dollhauser, <laughs> and you know that movie. Welcome to the Dollhauser. I love that movie, and then the TV show Dollhauser. <laughs> Starring uh, what's her name? What about Doogie Howser? Eliza Douchehauser? What about Doozy? Wait a minute! You mean what about Doozy? Doozy Hauger? What about Doozy Hauger? What about Rudger Hauger? Oh, the replicants! Who is Doogie Hauger? <laughs> Who isn't? Yeah, right back in your face, Yule. Answer now that. that. <laughs> answer that before you ask any other question. Well, what is the? Well, how would I answer that? Who, Who isn't, isn't Doozy Hauger? <laughs> You heard the question. Well, no, everybody is because... Objection! He's evading me! Ah, uh, the judge. <laughs> the judge. That's not how the judge talks. <laughs> the judge says, I do declare... The judge do declare... <laughs> the judge usually says something like, sustained. <laughs> Why? Yes, or I'll allow it. Or Why doesn't the judge refer to the judge in the third person judge? The judge says... <laughs> I think I think that this entire proceeding is Whoa. against law and order. What the fuck just this is well, Jesse the Body Ventura. Someone should, just snuck up behind me. I should explain that when we went down to the Hadron place, that I was down there with the Enigma Force 5, and oh, Jesse was there, and he was there, and we all got collided together. And he turned into a, uh, just a, a figure that follows me around everywhere. Wait a minute. He's oh. he's not following you around. He's the he's the bottom half of your body. Well, they, oh, yeah, that's right. I open up my... I open up my shirt right here, and he's just inside, peeking out of my tummy. You you got meshed together. All of your atoms have combined, to now you're some sort of a Hulatora. <laughs> yes, I, I exist. I exist in the belly of Hulhauser. You're like a Quato. I am like a Quato from Total Recall, <laughs> is which it? is a blueprint for what the Illuminati plan is. They know that we were the biggest threat. No, I know. But is it Quado or Quato? I thought it was Quato. I thought it was Quato. I saw it recently. T. Yeah. It, well, you, you're supposed to pronounce it with a thick accent, so it's hard to understand. <laughs> oh, I do apologize. It is me, Quado. Of course. Oh, and I am technically a Quado species now. Hmm. No, that's true. That is not the name of an individual. Hey, put the mic up by heel. Everybody, it's Huel Hauser. Huel, how how is this new existence affecting you? After all, you were one person. Now you're a mixture of two. Well, I kind of it's it's kind of fun because I get to eat for two. Ah. Uh. And wherever wherever I go, with ever how many Huel Hausers are, there's also the same number of Je- of Jesses peeking out of the of the stomach. So you're not the only one out of every why would, reality. Why would you think that it's always out of this out of the same one? 
Ah, great question. Maybe I maybe I come out of however many hules I want at the same. T- maybe there's five hundred of me as well. How many of of us are there? Have you ever come across Ooh, a Paul of Tonkins? That's up for that's up to you. As soon as you lift the veil of my off of your eyes, then you get to find out what that is. Wait a minute. How, how are, more how are people enjoying this episode? So I sometimes we. Sh- I'm going to say they're eighty percent enjoying it, <laughs> <laughs> but there is an infinite number of people out there enjoying it at eighty percent. That's right. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Paul, there's another hey, shirt right there. How'd I get here? Paul, you opened up your shirt, and what's peeking Wait out? Wait a minute! I'm beside this fella. Now hold on a Paul second. Paul F. I'm, Tompkins. I'm here in beautiful Hollywood, California. Oh my a, goodness! This looks like a podcast. You're, you're more he's, like a Hugh F. Tompkins. He's a Hugh. What? What is going on? This he, is freaking me out. He's a Hugh Hauser inhabiting him stummy from about three years ago. My shirt is ruined. Before you inhabited him? I sure did. Oh, nice to see you again. Well, hi. You want to have a sandwich down on Larchmont? Oh, if I could, if I could get the turkey pesto club. Well, let's go. Why don't we just? Li- I'll link arms with you, and All Jesse right. can link hey. arms with with Paul. What's going on? Why do I have to link arms with Paul F. Tompkins? Yeah, why do you need to link well, arms with anyone? Can't you just give him directions? <laughs> <laughs> we could just walk there. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, Wait, well hold on. Why are you? So, why, what is that opinion that they have right there? Was that? Well, I'm just saying we don't have to link arms. We could just walk there independently. So you're saying there's other ways to arrive at the same sandwich shop on Larchbug? Oh, my brother, there's so much I wish to show you. Wow. May may we may we may we kiss? <laughs> I wish we would. Wait, so so Huel's upper body is going to kiss Paul's lower body, almost in like a Huel sixty nine. Wait a minute, that, that a Huel sixty nine, a Huel sixty nine. That what, means what? that Paul and I are also going to be forced into a lover's embrace. Oh, were that the chimes at midnight? <laughs> I think so for my car. I, I did. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so I'd, I want to see this. In fact, I, I demand everyone to see this. To see it. Can right. we take some pictures? I hope, I, I hope the, oh, cameras the cameras are still not, rolling. Oh, the camera's not working. Oh, oh no. <laughs> it's too bad. Well, don't worry. We always have cameras at all times. Exactly. There is an infinite number of Luises with those cameras who are filming everything. Hi, Luises. Ha! Ha! Right. Come film this! Make so sure in, you get this! Get in, oh, we're getting some good coverage get into your of your Hulsty 9. Looks like there's about a thousand Luises getting, okay. getting a good angle That's, on I it. don't know if you can see this, folks. Shut up and kiss, guys. But this is a, almost like a giant wedding feast full of Hugh Housers and other creatures coming in and out of their tummies. It's like something out of Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream. I think this is where we have to say our vows. <laughs> Of course okay, good. Yeah, do, can I preside over this uh, ceremony? I wish you would. I'm a judge. I object. I'm an object. Now, who's this guy? I'm a, I'm a judge, sir. Jesse Ventura. I'm a judge in a kick and record. <laughs> Who is this guy? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, hold on, hold on. Jesse Ventura. <laughs> Jesse Ventura has a Paul F. Tompkins <laughs> coming out of his There's stomach. There's 100,000 Paul F. Tompkins at any time. It's, excuse me. It's Paul's F. Tompkins. <laughs> It's the correct, <laughs> yeah, the correct collective. Yeah, it's Whoppers plural. Jr., not Whopper Juniors. <laughs> and a Carl's Jr. Jr. is Carl's the third. <laughs> Wait so a minute, hold so on, there's right ways to say things as well as wrong ways. This is what I've discovered. My infinite journey through all the California. I want to talk to Paul's doppelganger. You're coming out of Jesse Ventura's stomach now, which is coming out of Huel's stomach. Wow. <laughs> well, I, think, I think the entire situation is untoward. I don't think I should have a certain amount of dignity about it. <laughs> but Paul, does your Huel have anything coming out of his stomach? Yeah, he's got a, he's got a Yogi Bear coming out of his stomach. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna do some picnic baskets. Wow, Yogi Bear! Now hold on. I've always wanted to have him on Are, the show. Is this what it means to be to be have a runaway? Are you running away from me at the altar right now? No, I, Huel, you've made me the happiest Huel in all the infinite Californias. If you would do me the great service. Oh of God, becoming, they're, they're gonna kiss. Of becoming, the judge declares you with me. The oh. judge declares you have to kiss. All right, all right, judge. Here we go. Wow, boy. Oh. This marriage is endorsed by the California School Book Association, the California Teachers Association, oh and the Interdimental Council of the Brotherhood of Hewell Housers and. 
Jesse Venturas and Paul Tompkins and that all was the so other. amazing. Mazel tov. Jesse Ventura kissed Paul, and then Paul, the other Paul, kissed uh, Yogi Bear. I thought it was the same I was, ju- I oh, was yeah. still kissing Paul right up until you got his attention. <laughs> oh, you could tell God. I wasn't into it, right? <laughs> Well, but you didn't. You didn't back down. No, I was polite. You're because no you're Tom a, Petty. You were, you I'm were polite because it. you're a former governor. And I, I, I'm allowed to kiss any one person at any time for as long and as I, I know do. that. Number four. Wow, that was wow. Nutty. I am reeling. Have you ever heard the like? It was. It was intricate. Mm. It was hard to figure out. It needed a flow chart. It did, but someone drew a picture of that Hulsty nine. By yes. the way, I, I'm not sure where where you can find that, but that was really funny. Thank it's you out that, there. Listener. It's out it's, there. Uh, the truth is out there. <laughs> X Files. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a fun show, and that's that's just uh, 15 minutes of that show. That show was two hours of gold. So go check out that one. That deserves yes. to be number four, huh? Absolutely. Yeah, and no higher. <laughs> and uh, before we get to number three, why don't we do another bonus? This is from episode 98, and this was a, a really strange one. Uh, Adam Scott was here. He came, and uh, all of a sudden in the middle of, sh- of the show, the sheriff of Nottingham, Alan Rickman, came in. <laughs> yeah. And he wanted to steal the comedy Bang Bang Gold, yeah. I believe. That's right. <laughs> Uh, all right, so what do you give I, it then? I, I think I would give it pants, but I would take it down to the tuxedo to get a new pe- measured for a proper pair of pants. All right, mm-hmm. and Adam, I think that's a that's a worthy uh, worthy uh, a worthy. Uh, Are you just going to say worthy uh, uh, a lot? A worthy uh, a worthy. Uh, <laughs> oh no, he's a worthy. Uh, I've robot? shut down your a Adam worthy, Scott, uh, Mister Ackerman. A worthy. Are you uh, believing uh, me yet? <laughs> How, how did you do that? Are you believing me? How did you do that? Kneel before me, Mr. Ruckerman. I will kneel. I will kneel. He's a robot. Adam how did Scott you? Scott is controlled by me, Alan Rickman. And I was only here. The gold is already gone. It's I'll, in the red line. I'll give you the gold. I'll do whatever you want. And the gold has been taken. I'll have all my... When I was yelling in that radio, my German slaves were removing it from your Earwolf office. <laughs> now suck on my glock. Oh, <laughs> you have such a pretty face, you do. Such an adorable little face, Mr. Rockerman. Oh, no, I know. Well, comedy so death ray, I'm afraid it's time for me to make my exit from a helicopter waiting on the top of the building. Oh, stop it, it wasn't that bad. Worthy, My uh, cum tastes uh, like worthy, strawberry uh, chocolate. I know because I have it all the time. Worthy, uh, well, uh, uh, do whatever, just please worthy, leave leave uh, us alone. I'm please. gonna leave you like this. Au uh, revoir. A worthy. Uh, I'm so sorry. A worthy. Uh, I'm so sorry for whatever worthy, I did to Adam. Uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm so sorry for whatever uh, I did to him. Perfect, uh, Mr. Worthy, uh, Scott. A worthy. Uh, You've played a worthy, your part uh, like a worthy, a worthy assistant. Uh, a worthy. Uh, a worthy. Uh, a worthy. Uh, a worthy uh, analogy. Oh, you're back. I'm sorry. Uh, n- uh nothing. Um, where'd he, Alan go? He. Um, I don't know. Something fucking crazy just happened. Huh. Um. Anyway, I thought it was a pretty good analogy. I would also say go to the tailor and get the pants fitted right or whatever. It was pretty good, but not you know, the rap part wasn't. My I wish favorite. I had my gold back. Bonus! A worthy uh. I am glad. I am glad that you highlighted that clip because it was uh, quite a moment. <laughs> Um, I remember really, really enjoying, uh, you know, sometimes you, you hear stuff where it, it's, uh, it's more than just fun. It's like it transcends mm, something in a certain so way. Yeah. I, Scott, I'm being totally serious right now. Oh, okay. I just want to talk shop a little bit. Um, there's there's a lot of improv that happens on this show, mm-hmm. and there's th- moments like that where even I, knowing this show as well as I do, was wondering, was there any way that that any of that was planned out? And then realizing none of it was planned Zero out. Zero percent. That there was just this moment that happened. You guys all went with it, 
and created this thing, and it spun out in this crazy direction. Yes. And that, to me, is the magic of this Thank of this you show. very much. Well, if I may talk shop for uh, a little bit, uh, I'm a big fan of your comedy. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, thanks. <laughs> thanks for jumping on board. Number three. Well, uh, uh, what was your name again? Hot Dog? Of course, that's my name, Hot Dog. I'm here to tell you what's up. That's your birth name? No, no, I changed my name to Hot Dog back in the back of my water skiing days. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You you just you say that like we know what you're talking about. No, that's out of left field for us. What do you mean? What do you mean? At what point in your 56 years have you ever water skied? I was, oh, back when water skiing was king in the 60s out here. There was <laughs> Is weed. that what happened in the 60s? Yeah, no. in the 60s, water skiing so, was king. So in the, in the 50s, rock yeah. and roll was king. Oh, sure it was. And 60s, then, water skiing took over for rock and roll? Yeah, yeah, rock and roll, absolutely, after the Big Bopper died. Oh, and, uh, I remember that. Yeah. Buddy Holly and all them. Nobody knew where to turn, and the answer was water skiing. Mm. And that's what the 60s was all about, water skiing. There was a, sure. You know, there was a war out here between the water skiers and the surfers. I did not know that. And water skiing way. came out on top, and water skiing was king throughout the 60s. And I was the number one water skiing hot dog. I got a Wikipedia this, because this seems Check very it out. Rare. Check it out on whatever you want. I kind of remember this period. There were, really? there were bands who sang about uh, the whole scene. Right? There were bands that played on water skis. I think you're thinking of the Beach Boys, and they talked about surfing. I don't think so. I'm, I'm remembering it differently. There were water skiing bands. Water skiing bands? Yeah, that's absolutely right. Wait, now, they would, ma- they would oh. mainly play the organ and piano. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not whilst water skiing. Oh, yeah, of course yeah. while water skiing. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I remember. Remember when they used to make those uh, those pyramids where like there'd be a, a, um, a water truck. ski in the truck. lower one? Huh? Truck. Yeah. Truck. Oh, truck. A truck's go. You have a song for a truck? What no, we don't have it. We just, we all be quiet. What about keep on trucking? No, no, we just, we have a moment of silence for a truck. All right, let's go ahead. I feel like if you don't have a song for a truck, you shouldn't have one for an airplane. <laughs> I agree. But anyway, yeah, I was the number one water skiing hot dog for a while there in the 60s after water skiing. Beat and you surfing. said you got your nickname from water skiing? Yeah, because I was a hot dog. Oh! Because oh, you were fancy on it. I was a water skiing hot dog. Oh, uh, I got Not it. that you were yeah. an actual hot dog that water skied. No, I was never. At any, no, at no time was I an actual hot dog that, okay. that a person could eat. But I've you, always been a person. You right. could be one. <laughs> In the future, right? Well, you know something? That's funny you should say that because that is in my last will and testament. Really? Yes. And there's a guy who will do it. Who will turn me, after I die, turn me into a, not is just it one hot dog. Stan Lee? Turn me into a lot of different Who hot dogs. Who is it? It seems like a superhero. No, it's, type a, thing. No, no. it's a guy who will actually like cut oh, you my open God. and grind yeah. you up in the. Uh, he operates out on a boat in international waters because it's not legal, but he will turn a dead body to anything that you request. That's amazing. Anything whatsoever. Some people, yeah. There's, he does human taxidermy, so if you want to have a loved one Smart. sort of posed in your living room for all time, that's good. He'll do that. That's Who would not, you want to eat you as a hot dog? Would it be one of the Shanana guys? Or how about this? You can't have anybody from Shanana eat you as a hot dog. All of them have lost their teeth and their ability to, to food, to feed. Oh, no, they look great there. John no, Bowser. no, no. I'm saying in this Jocko. scenario. In John this Bowser Bauman has broken his mouth from fitting his fist inside of it. Thank you. Oh, so no, he punched out his own teeth. So nobody in Shannon can eat you. Who would you like to eat you? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I just want to, I tell you what, I just want to be served uh, randomly to customers, inter- intermingled in with other hot dogs so they don't know they're eating me. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind for my ex-wife to eat, eat me. You've, that's the first time you brought her up. Oh, yeah. When were you married to I'm her? I'm telling my ex-wife. Eat me for a long time. Oh, <laughs> I get it. Still got it. You know what I'm talking about? Dog. Still got it, hot That's dog. That's a decent joke. <laughs> still got it, hot dog. Yeah. That counts anyway, as a joke. I am going to be turned into a bunch of hot dogs. The guy can't tell me right now how many hot dogs I'm going to be. I would say you would make uh, about 27 hot dogs. I'll tell you right now, and 25 of them are your thighs. Mm-hmm. The rest They're of that's massive. You could well, that's get right. Two hot dogs of the rest of your person. Most of me is below the waist. That's absolutely yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. You know what? You're talking an awful lot about what's going to happen to you when you die. Is it like. <laughs> is there any kind of a... You a, seem depressed. Yeah, you seem depressed to me. That's like. the first thing I would say, hot dog. I'm not depressed. I'm, I, everything is looking up for me because I'm gonna, I got my audition next week for Sean Now, oh. that doesn't go so good. <laughs> it seems like you've been through that a couple times already. If, if that does not go well. You've been that a couple times? Right. What? You've been through that a couple times. Yeah, I've been through that. Can a I do a times. depression test that we actually do? I think oh, we've yeah. actually done this before. Well, let's uh, hear a it depression is. test. I'm well, going to ace it because I got this audition coming up and everything is looking rosy for me. Okay, I'm going to give you two oh. options. Okay. You're going to pick which one you would prefer, and Scott will tell you if you're depressed. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Okay. All right. You ready? Yeah. Would you rather yeah. have a dove? Have a dove or a noose? <laughs> well. What am I going to do with a dove? Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> no. See, yeah, see you keep... this is a warning sign. No, 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 just the opposite. Scott evaluates when you're done, so. Yeah. I don't like the idea of uh, keeping him in a cage, right? You know what I'm saying? I would like I... to set him free, but then I can't appreciate him. Now, a, a noose, you don't have any responsibilities. You don't have to feed it. 
You know what I'm saying? Right. You don't have to make a decision like that, whether it should be free or imprisoned. Mm -hmm. You know, you, a lot you, like a human being should maybe be free and and you know not imprisoned. You know, yeah, that's the right. soul should yeah. not. And should. the noose can help with that. <laughs> okay, evaluate, Scott. S see, I this is a warning sign to me. And How's it, this it, a warning sign? Well, you've you've gotten very depressed in the last five minutes, and then you talk about this audition if it doesn't go well, and quite frankly, from after hearing your Percentages, singing, yeah, yeah. I don't what know, do you mean? Shauna you know, not only has. I mean, I'm not warmed up or anything. Hot dog, like calm that. down, hot dog. First of all, calm down. Okay, Scott. Don't tell me great great he just told you, Scott. This guy just told me he doesn't think my shot at all. It's going to go <laughs> great. Down, buddy. It's going to go great. It has to go great. Or it what? It has to go. <laughs> Shh. Shh. Your thighs or are you, bulging. Or, or, or you guys are going to get a box of hot dogs next week. Oh, no. Hey, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I thought that you said you didn't want him to go to specific you people. You said random people. Well, you I'll know just, us. I'll change my mind. That's not a death Maybe threat. I'll change my that's mind. Not, I'm just not going to eat the hot dog if I get one. I don't know which one is yours. Oh, really? I've yeah. never received loose hot dogs in my life. Yeah, I'll just toss the whole box If you out. receive in the mail a box full of hot dogs next week, you're not going to eat them? I'm telling you, it's very appetizing. <laughs> I don't know. I might eat them. Uh, we'll finger I, out the ones that you're in and not... I, I like... find it hard to turn down a nice hot dog. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, I really do. This is turning gonna very really homosexual. Nice hot dogs. These are going to be nice hot dogs. Don't say that. Well, I'm going to turn them down. I'm going to turn them down. Okay, no. hot dog. Hypothetically... All sorry. right, all right. Hypothetically, yeah. you go into Sha Na Na. They laugh at you, of course, when you walk in because sure, they think sure. you're be mentally ill. Well, we're all having fun. Yeah. <laughs> we're all having fun, right? Yeah, you know. You Shana see Na, the members like of Sha Na Na, they say, okay, hit us with what you got. You trot yeah. out your best number, dip, certainly. Dip, dip, dip. Wow. So that, that is That's your best. That's not that bad, actually. Yeah, man. It's not bad at all. And then I, I do the dance moves on them with my powerful, powerful legs. Maybe it's the dance moves. That's got to be higher than it. anybody else. That's got to be it. You can lift your whole leg above your uh, your head, huh? Yeah, man. I can do anything with these legs. You name it, I can do it with these legs. Really? Can mm -hmm. you... Um, Box with them like a kangaroo. I've done would? it many times. I've have you really? Many, many times. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have can you, you... Uh, uh, like a cricket? Can you rub them together and make and music? Make music? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Holy sh! That's insane. Wow. That's crazy. Yep. Amazing. That's I guess, amazing. I company myself on it the cricket legs. It seems like you should be. I could sing and do the cricket legs. Cons don't call it the cricket legs. It seems <laughs> like you. It's, no, it's not. Can't be called that. It seems like That's you should be called. making money off of that. By the way, I think you 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 sing maybe a half a bar of a song every time. So I don't know how good you are at Shannon Austin. Yeah, we can't really tell. All you've done is that you said the same. Doop, doop, doop. And Scott just well. nailed it the same way you did. And again, do not get mad. About? Do not get mad. <laughs> well, he did not just nail it. I've been working on this. Let's for have a do 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 off. Yeah, let's have let's a quick do 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 do. <laughs> too long, way too long. Too long. That's exactly too, how long they do it. Hot dog. Long. No, that wasn't any good. <laughs> That's hot dogging on that song. Oh, he never hot dogged on that. I'll show you a hot dog. Do it. All right, let's. Dip, 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 wow. That's the now, same that's amount. Hot, that's exactly that's just hot the dog. same. That you no, you done. did not. That was hot dogging. It is not. Oh, you don't know anything. Nothing changed. You're gonna tell hot dog what hot dogging is and what it isn't. I hate to say yes, but yes. I'm going to tell Hot Dog that he's not Hot Dog. And That's ridiculous. Scott. All right, Hot Dog, let, yeah. let's get back to this hypothetical. By the way, if we play right. this drinking game, you would be hammered right now. <laughs> We've said the word Hot Dog 100 <laughs> times. No, we're not saying what's up, Hot Dog. What's though. up? Yeah, never. Hot Dog? Uh, you want to know what's up? Let's, uh, I'm let, here to tell you what's up. Not this again. <laughs> let's get back to this hypothetical. You go, oh, yeah. you audition. Yeah. yeah. You, you do a great job. Of course, I'm going to do a great job. You do the best that you can I can't do. Fail. I cannot fail. I will not fail. Sean Anna says to you, I'm yeah. sorry we don't have any openings. Yeah, uh huh. At this time. Right. Sorry, hot dog, but you're going to have to audition again in the future. Uh huh. All right. What, what are your plans? Well, that's why I'm bringing the flamethrower. You Ooh. didn't bring that up at all. Oh, yeah. I didn't mention the flamethrower. This is the first time. By the way, you randomly spice in water skiing. Ex-wife, flamethrower. We mm. knew nothing about you before you entered yeah. in this room, what, 30 minutes ago? Yeah. It's okay, all right. What are you so excited about? <laughs> I'm getting very... I you to calm down. I can't very, now. Very exercised. Yeah. I can't. I kind of... You know what? Physician I want to audition. <laughs> I want to audition for Shannon and get it just so this fucking douchebag doesn't get it. That's I, a great plan. Let's hear your do-do-do-do-do. doop do 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 Whoa. What a joke that was. <laughs> <laughs> that was ridiculous. That was absurd. Let me yeah, go one more that a little bit because it's absurd, absurd, it sounded per it sounded just as good as yours. I, I don't know what was worse, the dips or the wah. <laughs> but <laughs> they were all terrible. That Can was I unbelievable. Can I get one more? Can I get one more? All right, one more. Well, yeah, one more. That'll do it. I've been doing this for <laughs> 30 years. Are you ready? All right, here we go. I hate to say it, but that was good. That was horrible. No, hot dog. 
The, I, Woodstock would have been a bloodbath <laughs> if uh, this guy had been there doing that. People would have turned on one another. I don't know. And I like murder it. would have been a, ma- a site of mass murder. Thank you, Scott. I sort of just liked uh, everything about it. You know, I mean, it check wasn't- this out. <laughs> <laughs> It's exactly the same. Way. Now that's really good, isn't it? Spice it up. Give all right, all right. You want me to spice it up? Give us a serious. You want me to hit you with something? Hot different? Hot dog it. Hot dog it. Dip, 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 dip. See, that how was that? I don't well, know. I just blew your mind. I shut you up for good. Number two. I'm sorry. What other? Uh, now I'm, I'm. I don't know why I'm asking this. You've been in what? theater more than I'm, I'm assuming more than 18 years. Not just doing the Rockettes. I other started projects. out in the peep shows down in uh, in uh, Midtown, and mm-hmm. I uh, worked with some very sexy and classy girls there. And mm-hmm. then uh, then opening came up at uh, Radio City, and I brought my girls over there, and they became the Rockettes. And but have you ever done? And is this your first actual play? Have you done other plays? Well, let's see. Uh, have I done other plays? Uh, yeah, I did a production of Beauty and the Beast. Oh, uh, where was that? What was, was that? Where was that? That was out there in Connecticut. I did it. Oh, okay. Oh. In, at a church, and uh, yeah. it was a church basement production of uh, Beauty and the Beast. Church and, basement. All right. Yeah, that's right. And there were a lot of different beasts. We got a lot of beasts in there. Was that a, sort all of like a Greek of chorus as well, triple cast? It or? was real animals. We got all kinds of real animals in there because I had a, a, an agreement with the petting zoo. <laughs> what kind of agreement? <laughs> yeah, what was this? Like, what was what, what, we're, what we're, kind of handshake deal went on yeah. between you guys? I was uh, I was supplying them with some things that those guys needed, and uh, in return, I their animals guess. were on loan for the show, mm-hmm. and we got some girls that like animals. Wait, wait I'm sorry, like. Because the Beauty and the Beast is about a, a guy that's turned into a beast, and and a, yeah. and a woman has to kiss him, and fall in love with him to turn him back into a human. Yeah, yeah, sure she does. She's got to really, she's got to really show her affections for these beasts, uh, if she wants to turn him back into a prince. So, um, it was, it was a good show. Uh, I had the mind reels. What? Uh, how, how how would that show end? Did did the beast ever turned yeah, was it a happy a ending human, i'm sorry let me rephrase you know, that yeah, hold on that. i was pretty happy yeah um <laughs> but you know what's funny about that is and uh we didn't we didn't catch it until the end of the run at no time was there ever a transformation back into a person <laughs> you just didn't catch that we just forgot about it because we were having so much fun with the section <laughs> where they fall in love but they show their affections for each other and they didn't seem to be any way anything after that would have been anticlimactic the very definition. That's right. There was no place to go after we got this poor girl playing beauty. Oh, <laughs> this poor girl. You just you got a little emotional. really emotional again. Yeah, she okay well, or she's not okay? No, oh. she's not okay. <laughs> oh my gosh! This is the only time I've ever seen you actually. Yeah, uh, have some she sort was of a remorse. good kid. She didn't know that there were going to be quite so many animals, and that it was. She thought be, there would just be one. To be honest with you, she thought there was going to be an actor in a mask, and I. You know, kind of spring it on her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how, we got uh, a lot many, of different edibles. How many performances? <laughs> yeah, how of many? This? We ran that show for eighteen months. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Whoa! In this church, but, um, how were, were there any Is this re- off peak hours? Months? Yeah, or? were there? What were the reviews like? Were there like scathing? These reviews were absolutely scathing, one after another, and the police were involved. And, uh, yeah, we had to start doing it at odd times. We had to start running the show uh, just sort of, what's it called, like a flash mob or whatever. Mm-hmm. We had to just announce mm-hmm. to people, it's happening now. Get down here. <laughs> and this was quite a long time ago, it sounds like. So how, how do you ago, how do you yeah. announce to your fans we something to, like that? We had to go door to door. We had a guy go door to door and knock on people's houses who we had reason to believe would be pretty supposed to enjoy this show. <laughs> and say it's Families? Or? It's happening right now. Yeah, sure, families. That's right. All, All right. kinds of people. <laughs> well, did you did you ever have like um was I mean eighteen months in a small yeah. Connecticut town? I'm, I'm assuming were there repeat customers? A lot of repeat customers. Yeah, a lot of people coming from out of town. People coming up from Mexico. Mm-hmm. Uh, Why would people come up from Mexico yeah. to Connecticut? <laughs> it How did they seems like this, there's man. a lot more of that kind of thing going yeah, on down yeah, there. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, but not not like this, baby. This was the best of the best, and they, they were coming down from Canada. People were coming from all over the world to check out this show. Hmm. It got to be a real sensation. Yeah, 
I got. I have to tell you though, Disney sued us. Uh, we did get sued by Disney. If for, uh, uh, but I thought Beauty for, and the Beast was in public domain. Yeah, yeah, I thought so too. Well, we put we're, Disney's Beauty and the Beast on all the years. See, that's that's probably <laughs> that's probably where they got you. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the the one know, hiccup that, in yeah. your plan. Yeah, yeah. Well, what are you gonna do? You know, I don't know. Not so, use, but you, it sounds like mind. you came out of that unscathed. Or, or did you? You seem, were, you seem to bounce back okay. You're still producing stuff. Yeah, I'm still out there doing stuff. Yeah, yeah. They can't stop me. You know, we did. We ended up not making a dime from it by the time we settled with Disney. Hmm. Uh, they they uh, confiscated all the tapes of the show. We taped everyone. Well, um, why were you, you were taping we all taped the shows? Every production, and now they're in the Disney vault. You know. Oh, uh, I hope they uh, open that up. God, that'd be because now with Blu-ray. Yeah, you know, get they a, open the vault from time to time. Maybe they'll let it out. I'd love to see like Song of the South on Blu-ray. Oh my this. goodness. Yeah, that would be really great. <laughs> Disney's Beauty and the Beast, directed by Don DeMello. <laughs> I don't know if they would call it Disney's Beauty and the Beast. It's just a black and white camera footage <laughs> of the Connecticut mayor. <laughs> um, so now, yeah. so you're in previews now. Now, I, I don't want to. I don't want to be pessimistic. I'm, I, I wish you the, the best for sure the production, but. If if by some chance it doesn't make its full run and, and like do you have anything lined up? I mean, I know you're saying you'll be back in Manhattan next year with the Rockettes, but what if you have like six seven months of downtime? Is anything else lined up? Or yeah, that's a good question. I'm thinking of doing a production of Peter Pan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Out, out here or or just uh, whoever will have you. Well, the plan now is to try and do it on a boat in international waters so that we can uh-huh. have a little more fun with it. Okay, let me guess. What's well, going on here? What's your conception of Peter? Because usually it's it's it, uh, isn't Peter Pan isn't the part usually played by a woman? Usually in- played by a woman because a young teenage boy can't handle the constraints Ooh. of the part, right? Uh, and uh, yeah. you know there'd be laws governing uh, how many shows they can do. Right, right. Broadway tends to like to do eight or ten per mm-hmm. week. Nothing uh, but limits. Nothing but limits. Mm-hmm. But so, not out on the water. We can do whatever we want. One of the uh, things I keep saying is, how come we have to hear about Captain Hook getting his hand bit off by a crocodile? Why can't we see it? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So I'd like to see that. So you want that? You want like a little uh, prequel action, right? Where we find out how he lost his hand. Which means that for every production, we're going to need a different Hook, mm-hmm. Captain Hook. You know what I mean? Oh, wait, 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 wait! You want it be? Wouldn't you just have an actor and you'd have like a fake hand and he would get it bitten? You know that? Does that sound very interesting to you? I don't know. I mean, you know what I'm uh, saying? That I could do on land. I'm going to go out to the water and get a guy out there playing Captain Hook and get a crocodile and see what, how, if we can get the crocodile to bite his hand off at the beginning of the show. I don't know if you can train crocodiles to, yeah, to specifically just bite just, the guy's mm-hmm. hands off. Would that, is that where the drugs would come in? or? Well, you'd wrap whatever crocodiles eat around his hand. You know mm, what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm not sure what they mm, eat. Yeah. What it sounds like eat. humans. I think. Yeah, they think he just eat humans, so he would. Or you'd be dangling the whole thing. You could wrap another human around. Well, no, I don't know. You'd have to figure out something. Some bloody meat. That's not your like under that. your purview, though. You have technical advisors for that kind of. Uh, I got an animal guy. Hmm. Yeah, I got an animal guy I've been working with ever since that show in Connecticut. Oh, okay. Wow. And he is hooked but bad on heroin. <laughs> And that's another uh, kind of hook. That yeah, could be there in the you show. Go. yeah, that's right. Uh huh. Maybe they call him Captain Hook because. Think of it that way. I yeah, mean, because he's hooked. Right. Well, these guys are going to need to. You know, we're going to have to get him out of the water somehow. It's be I just easy. don't really know what you would do. I don't know how, what your take would be on a show about a, a magical flying hermaphrodite that comes to children in the night and then whisks them away into the darkness. I mean, I don't really. Who's see the any. hermaphrodite? Is that Tinkerbell? Well, isn't it like? I mean, I'm just oh, saying. Oh, Peter playing, Pan. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That well, seems pretty wholesome. I mean, I don't know what you would. One of my ideas is that uh, he he uh, has deluded himself into thinking he can fly. He can't fly. And he uh, convinces all these children he can fly. And mm-hmm. they just plummet. Mm-hmm. They just step out the window the of the boat. nursery and then plummet into the water mm-hmm. from a high distance, you know. So that's a laugh right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's a laugh you like, like uh, you like to plan out the laugh lines yeah yeah you got to have shows, scenes when I see a triple and then the kids falling plummeting into, into water sure sure yeah. you get mm. some laughs on there You're, a lot of gags huh? oh yeah you gotta have the gags on there so this is gonna be uh, Disney Speeder Fan out on international waters okay mm-hmm. and and then I, I would imagine then it's pretty much just the same storyline uh, Peter Pan rallies against Captain Hook uh Forms kind of a uh, an army of of children. Yeah, a lot of children. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
please don't yeah, be saying what I, I think really you're would saying. not. Uh, I, I don't. I, I mean, that's there are a lot of things we joke about on this show, yeah, but yeah, that is yeah. that is one that I find to be almost off limits. Mm-hmm. Uh, not quite, but almost. Well, I think we're going to have <sighs> girls playing the children. If that oh. makes you feel any better, eh, yeah, probably. I'm talking mm-hmm. about nice adult girls. Mm-hmm. Oh wait, adult girls sure, playing yeah, the young yeah, boys. Yeah, young oh boys. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the idea. Except mm-hmm. for Peter Pan. Peter Pan, I, it's a good question, yeah, because it's been done that way. Peter Pan has been played by a girl. Yeah. My, I don't know. No, I think I want three or four girls playing Peter Pan. Yeah, it might, it might be but nice to would, get a few teenage would, boys in there. Though. Teenage boys, maybe. I hate yeah, to Wait ask a minute, this, now, but, now I'm on your side. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Right, okay. But what would be the, I, I'm just sorry, but what would be the way that Peter Pan would rally and manipulate these these girls playing boys into being in his army like well i think it's been done that he's got a sword i think he should have a whip i want to see him with uh, mm. a cat of nine tails uh, mm. to spur the uh, lost boys on oh, against God. captain hook and uh, you know maybe we'll go ahead and call them the lost girls this might be a little bit better because i've known a lot of lost girls in my time a lot of lost girls and i model them after that what uh uh I, I recall you having a signature phrase um, when you work with the Rockettes. Sure. Uh, w- would this be a similar kind of thing? Or are you bring using... out the girls. Yeah, 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 that's right. Anytime anything is boring in one of my shows, we bring out the girls. If I see the audience nodding off, whatever's going on, I say, bring out the girls. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the time, uh, you know, in this Cinderella production, we've got, we've got a whole pen full of girls. And, um, wait, uh, a pen? Yeah, I keep them in a pen. <laughs> And, uh, you know, if the production lags at any moment, I'll just say, bring out the girls, and they'll come out. Then you kind of open up the uh, gate of the pen. <laughs> they open up the pen, yeah. yeah. And they we, just come spilling out? Yeah, and we're going to keep some water and snacks on the stage, so that's where they go, hmm. you know, because they'll be thirsty. And they get out there and do some dancing or something. Now, does the, the fairy tale I, theater, I've... I, is I gotta listen. I, I hate to interrupt, but you know, I get now that I have a daughter. I have a lot of get a lot of mailings for children's theaters and children's. Oh well, you're, this show is for you. Um, um, mm. I'm just saying that yeah. normally we would get flyers and stuff from the fairy tale theater, um, and we just I just realized we got one the other day, and it, it's the it is the one for Cinderella. Oh, but there's good. no but there's no image. Was there? It's like it's like they just said Cinderella, and there looked like there might have been an image on there, but now there's nothing there. Just That's one of the conflicts. The, That's oh, one of really? the conflicts what? right there. Yeah. Well, we had the three goat girls <laughs> on there, mm-hmm. and uh, they're they're pleasuring some guy. But I'm sorry. On and, uh, go ahead. And in the distance is a party going on in the castle. And they're sort of g- casting their gaze at the castle, go- you know, sort of like, oh, I wish I could go to that party, while they're pleasuring this guy. And then you've got, we had the nude uh, uh, fairy godmother up in the corner, they're superimposed into the picture, like she's on the way to the rescue with her magic wand. <laughs> and it told, told the story of the whole show. Do you have the people in the castle looking back at the three goat girls saying, I wish I could be at that party, too? So it's almost like... Right, exactly. Or is their party even better than theirs? Oh, the party? Oh, well, once we get to the... Yeah, now that's crazy. Once we get to the actual party the Prince Charming is throwing... Mm-hmm. I hate to ask, but what, what goes on at the party? Yeah. I mean, oh what could be God. crazier than, than what you described? It's an absolute point. bacchanal. It's an insane orgy. Of everything you've ever wanted to see, name uh, one thing you want to see. Uh, I mean, I just I mean, at a children's theater, like maybe some nice dancing or yeah, yeah some pretty some uh, ball gowns. Ball? No, you're not going to see that. Mm. I haven't seen any ball. There's some dancing. Oh, I love you know, I love the scene where where she where the clock is striking midnight and she has to run away and she, and she leaves her glass slipper. Remember oh, that? Oh yeah. So right. do you, what, how do you guys do that? Like yeah. that? I bet that's just wonderful, right? Yeah, she leaves behind all three of her pasties, <laughs> <laughs> including the, the uh, patent pending pussy <laughs> pasty. Uh-huh. <laughs> Oh boy! Um, so you know what? I mean, it's going to be very memorable, okay. and kids are going to love it, and parents are going to love it. It's not one of these things where the parents are sitting there going, "Oh, Jesus, this is just for kids." You know what I'm saying? They're saying that this is not for kids, nor anyone else. Well, it's a story. I mean, this is an enduring classic story. You know, the good story of Cinderella, and the story is intact. Mm-hmm. So it's that's. I there see for your them. point on that. I mean, yeah, I guess uh-huh. the basic structure is still there, and sure. a good story is a good story. Every but girl wants to be a princess. I you know what's funny though? Mm-hmm. Come to think of it, we never do get to the ending. 
he never... You know what? That's funny. I just realized that, Bell, we never get to the point where he... Because it's, it's a climactic after the orgy at the yes, party yes. where she goes, you know, and then the clock strikes 12 and she runs out and leaves all of her pasties and she runs through the audience and interacts with the audience. Oh. And then that's the end. That's how we're ending our production, but... Interactive theater? Yeah. Very interactive. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, I... <clears throat> I've never actually heard of the the fairy tale theater in Pasadena. Is this a real place? <laughs> or oh, they have a long tradition of doing wonderful productions for, but exclusively just for children, <laughs> right? It, yeah, hence the fairy tale theater. Garbage. Well, absolute <laughs> garbage. I went to see their Hansel and Gretel, and I'm like, this is going to be a good one. They're literally taken captive. You know what I'm saying? They're mm -hmm. they're giving candy. Yes, mm -hmm. this is going to be interesting, right? You know, they get bondage type of thing. <laughs> they did. They played with none of it. They told it exactly the way you read it a thousand times. Nothing for daddy. Number one. This, by the way, this clip was voted on uh, two to one from our top, our number ten episode. What does that mean? It got twice as many votes as our number ten episode. Wow! Like, by an overwhelming margin, this wow. is what you have decreed as the best episode of the year. Surely I am in it. Surely you are not. Oh, <laughs> and boy. I'm so sorry, but you did make the top ten. Well, yeah, I guess there's that. This is episode 120, Farts and Procreation. This is our uh, Parks and Recreation special. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, it was a late night, and we got really weird. And, and Harris had been doing this character on previous episodes called Jack from the yum from the lumber yard. He worked at a lumber yard. Yeah. You're being very generous by calling that a character. <laughs> he wanted to bring it back, and Adam, uh, he and Adam revealed that they were in a two-person show together playing brothers in the right. lumber yard. Bros. Bros, and uh, that is that is our top clip <laughs> of the uh, year. So let's hear it. This is Farts and Procreation, episode one hundred and twenty, number one. Number one. Uh, all right. So, and your name's Brian. Well, my character's we, name is. Brian. Let us Brian, know if you officially name? if we've entered. Okay. So, uh, do you need to do anything to prepare for this? Any well, kind of? I'll we'll do the entrance. Okay. All right. Ready. Creek. Slam. Sit. <laughs> Hello? Hey. Hey, Jack. Uh, well, it's great, to, it's great to meet you. But Well, I mean, Jack, you and I have met before. Indeed. And, Brian, this is our first time meeting? It is. It is. Hi. Hi. It's great to, great to meet you both. So, uh, now, you're, you, uh, uh, we're, we're taping this at night. Uh, are you coming from a long day at the lumberyard? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I work today. Jack, Jack worked, worked as well. Not too long. It was pretty normal. Nine to five, well, nine to five thirty. I got in at eight forty-five. I just had a little, little bit of work to do before. Right, and then I had I a little down. bit after, so I stayed a half hour late. I'm surprised. I mean, I would think I. I just want to jump in for a second. I would think that. Hi, I'm, what's, what's? Oh, your I'm name? Chelsea. Chelsea. Hi, Hi, nice yeah. to meet you both. Hello, nice to meet you. Jack, Brian. Uh, cool flannels. Um, <laughs> my question is. <laughs> I feel like, wouldn't you get up at 6 a.m. and be, like, having coffee and cutting down trees early, earlier in the day? Well, maybe if we were, if we worked, uh, if we were uh, lumbermen. Lumberjacks. Lumberjacks. It, being but in we, the lumber trade, yeah, we, you'd think you would know these terms. I, I do. That's actually what we call it on the yard. Oh, I should, lumbermen. Oh, yeah. yeah. But we, we work at the lumber yard. The lumber's already been cut down. Yeah. Uh, it's already been treated and greased. I do a lot of administrative stuff. Hmm. I like payroll I, or? Payroll and just general, like some HR and just HR. general. Yeah, I as get, in like human resources. Yeah, I do. I do the lion's share of the hiring and the firing. <laughs> okay. Are you high right now? What? <laughs> no, 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 Jack doesn't get high. Jack. Oh, I'm a sorry. family man. I have three lovely girls. Okay, no offense. How sorry. old are your girls? Thirty. Two. Thirty. Two. Then thirty-five. Wait, 30? <laughs> you have two <laughs> and 35? Yes. So that's quite a that's quite a gap between the 30-year-old and the 2-year-old. It's a hard little miracle. Wait, 32, 2, what is it? No, 30. 30 years two, old. 2 years old. Mm -hmm. And 35. 35. 
Normally people do it in descending order. <laughs> 35, 30, oh, and then we just had one little yeah, two-year-old. Yeah, it's disorienting. You say 30, <laughs> two, and 35. We don't know what to think. They are they are beautiful girls. Do you have a family? I'm uh, hoping to start one soon. Uh, my wife, uh, Patrice, is... Patrice? Is, uh, Patrice. Yeah, Patrice is. <laughs> Patrice is. <laughs> Patrice is Jack's sister. Well, really? That's, yeah, that's how we came to know each other. Do not a, not working at the lumber yard. Uh, well, no, that's how I got the job at the oh, lumber yard. Oh, great. so your kids will be related. Well, yeah, they'll be cousins. That's fun, though, right? It, it well, yeah, it's a it's a really good job. No, I mean having kids that are co- uh, anyway. Well, we don't have kids yet. We're hoping to start a family soon. Mm-hmm. Best of luck, Thank Wait, you. Marjorie. Gonna- Marjorie, my wife, is his sister. <laughs> well, so, what? That's what, so then you're really going to share a lot of yeah. uh, DNA, those kids. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, Patrice's. Patrice's and, is, and Marge. And Mar- wait. Is Jack's sister, and Marjorie is my sister. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So, how, how did you not know each other before? We just had never crossed paths. <laughs> and then once you did, it sort of like. Well, you- I, I needed a job. So. Uh, Jack was kind enough. Uh, we were having dinner. Even though you had never met. No, we, we had met by this point. Oh, okay. But just uh, once before, and we were having dinner at uh, my and Patrice's his house, and Jack said, why don't you come on by? And What were you doing before that? Like, what was your job before? I I worked at uh, at Chipotle. <laughs> it's quite which, a- which I love. Oh, it's such a change. Do you like yeah. being outdoors more? I was I, w- I wanted to get outdoors. I was a manager at Chipotle, so I kind of walked away from a really solid job. Mm. And and and. Uh, but it sounds you like took, you you it, didn't have anything to walk out to because you you said you needed a job. So Jack. Well, said, I just come was looking by. for a change. Oh, I see. Okay. So Jack so, said, "Why don't you come on down?" And now he works there. He handles the, the pine and the ply, and the luon, hmm. and the derbies, the pinewood, the the uh, pinewood mm. derby cars. Wait, wait, wait a minute! The Pinewood, you guys make Pinewood Derby cars well, for the Cub Scouts and stuff. Yeah. We oh, okay. Do. And that's your, strictly under your purview. Yeah, I'm in charge of that. That's I your belly in charge. After a while, he showed that he was up to it, and sure. I gave him the Pinewood Derby. You gave him the Scouts account. Gave him the Scout, the big Scouts account. We make quite a few of those every year. How many? Twelve. Yeah. Twelve <laughs> per year. But that's, I mean, they take a long time, I'm sure. Yeah, well, we focus on one per month, because there are 12 months every year. So as soon as the derby's over, you get right back in there and you start well, making... I'm, yeah, I'm doing other stuff Yeah, uh, concurrently. It's yeah. a good You job. know, what's funny, I, I, this is a comedy program, I can tell you a funny story. But sure, I'd love to hear one, yeah. He, a customer came in and said, I want four two-by-fours, and... Uh, they just needed four two-by-fours? <laughs> four of them. Uh-huh. And you said... They were well, building a table. Right. And you, and you said, what about lines. an 8x16? Well, what's funny is that... It seems like they might come up short building a table, but just... That kind of pertains to the, oh, I guess, okay. the humor of it, okay. is that an actual the actual measurement of a 2x4 is a quarter inch shorter on each side. Mm-hmm. And so it's technically a 1 and 3 fourths by 3 and 3 fourths. Uh-huh. So he... And so I, I was like... <laughs> <laughs> you were like... So, oh, sorry, my vernacular. <laughs> yeah, it seemed to be atypical of the way you usually talk. So on. I, I told the fellow, "Are you sure you need? Do you need exactly two by four, or do you need one three quarter, three and three quarters?" And then Brian was there, and and he laughed, and uh, it was funny. So yeah, <laughs> wait, and that's the end of the story. Well, I. It, it, it's a good lumber story. I get, yeah, if you're a lumber man. For a lumber story, it's no, good. No. If you're a lumber man, then... Yeah. Did he also, end up getting what he wanted, or did he leave dissatisfied? No, he he was, he was left happy. We Everyone always leaves happy from Carl's. Mm. That's our that's what it says. Who is Carl again? My father. Your father. Okay. and but, Which would be my... Father-in-law. My father-in-law. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so you'd known him for a while. Well, he passed on. Oh, okay. Sorry. The tree fell on so, <laughs> a tree fell on him? Well, a stack of lumber. It used to be a tree. So a former tree fell on him. Oh, we man. call it trees. 
but it's <laughs> for you guys. It's just lumber. That call did everything. He, did he yeah, we call it? paper trees. Yeah, call pretty much anything. Came from trees. Yeah, bring trees. down, bring down three trees. I'm just saying, bring down the equivalent of three trees and or like and or like form. that's like uh, several thousand pencils. Yeah, bring down, bring down all the trees, and it's just this giant thing of uh, a container filled with uh, with cars. <laughs> that's look. The Cub Scout cars. Oh, the Pinewood Derby uh, cars. Uh, 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 you keep them all in a giant container. <laughs> yeah, we keep a t- one tree's equivalent of uh, Pinewood uh-huh. Derby cars in w- per container. Okay, so maybe about uh, four and a half cars. It's per- four thousand cars. Oh. Per, to make up one tree. Yeah, wait. <laughs> yes, once wait you're up. done. Once you're done with the cars, mm-hmm. you 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 keep them or we keep them. Yeah, we make twelve per year and we keep them. How many till 4,000? We're selling 4,000 of the Boy Scouts in 20 years. Huh. Interesting. And also my math is off there, so yeah. it might not... It could be like 300 years. Really interesting <laughs> operation you got going there down at Carl's. Um, also, we opened a, a, other, a sister store. It's Carl's Jr. <laughs> it is. What do you, and what do you sell there? Lumber. Oh, okay. It's it just is. called Carl's Jr. Burgers. It is called that. It's called Carl's Jr. <laughs> it is? Yeah, it really is. I'm crying. Okay. <laughs> You're crying at the Think memory, my, oh, the memory my dad, of Carl? The, yeah. My yeah. yeah and but it was, it's called Carl's Jr. Sandburgers. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, Jack, are you okay? Jack. Oh, my God. He's he's him. having a manic episode. Wait, 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 it was your dad that died? I thought it was your dad. It was his, no, father-in-law. his father-in-law. Mm-hmm. Father-in-law. Oh. It was Jack's dad. Patrice is his Did uh did you father. feel like you had said everything you had to say to him before he went? <laughs> I no no. No, I had I did not. There's a lot left unsaid. For, father and son relationship is very complicated. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I, I think you would probably disagreed with him about adding that whole hamburgers to the Carl's Jr. <laughs> yes, he thought well, if we're just going to sell lumber, people might confuse it with the Carl's Jr. hamburger right, shop. Right, right. So I let's, said, but that's good. They'll come there. And then a Want, And then he goes, wanting burgers, they'll come there. And I said, so we'll sell burgers, too. <laughs> and then it was right at that moment that he died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After he had signed a contract. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and then also there was just drama. He wanted 13 Pinewood cars made a year. And then me and Brian were like, uh, what? What? But he also had a crazy idea to change the Gregorian calendar to 13 months a year, right? He did, and he did it. He did it. Yeah, yeah. he was successful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the modern Gregorian calendar that people still use is now 13 months. Yeah, definitely. Because of Carl. This is Junior. The hamburgers. Oh, I should say, his last name was Junior. Right. And so your last name is Junior. Right, Jack's Junior. Junior. Yes. Not just Junior, but Junior. S J U N I O R. Did Patrice's keep her uh, maiden name? Or uh, she hyphenated? No, she took my name. And what is your last name? Pieces. So her her name is Patrice's, Patrice's Pieces. Patrice's Pieces? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So my, Brian my, Pieces. Do you want to know what my father's name was? Yeah, I'd love to hear. Reese's. <laughs> All right. This is a crazy uh, family. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot here. So, a lot more going on than the last time Jack uh, stopped by. Yeah. <laughs> a lot That's more drama. True. That is true. I guess we just really scratched the surface <laughs> last time. Yeah, I can really see how this is coming to life. Well, here. you bring you you bring someone along, especially someone that's family. We get along very well, so things yeah. are bound to come up. You guys ever have a fight or uh, any kind of uh, interpersonal conflict? Sure, sure. Hmm. How long have you known each other now? Uh, for teen. Years. <laughs> fourteen years. Mm-hmm. And in those fourteen years, some things are bound to come up, mm-hmm. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Uh maybe uh describe describe like your biggest fight, your biggest blowout. W- w- would it have been the um the the was- forest fire uh preparedness week we we had to deal with? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's he slept with Marjorie. Oh, <laughs> During, it was what during force fire preparedness. Well, I don't know why you would describe it. <laughs> why that comes to mind? It's a bit. It's a big week for us, and, and so there's gets a lot you all of pressure. Kind of gets the blood and, going. And yeah, so I, I ended up sleeping with Marjorie, but we we've definitely that's your wife. 
That is my wife. And so and your you. and your sister. It's my sister. <laughs> Oh my god. Man, I just put that together. <laughs> you guys are so crazy. You didn't even realize that? I thought that's why you were so mad. <laughs> no, I would have been more in awe or shock than anything. Shock and awe. But I was mad because you just you slept with my wife. I didn't even realize. Yeah, the implications and oh, the just. Boy, yeah, yeah. boy. Well, how was it? It was, you know, it was my sister. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it was, it was great. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> that's that, that doesn't necessarily follow. Well, I mean, if you think about it, you think about I'm going to sleep with someone, and then you think about oh, my sister, and you you would just assume it would be great, mm. and it was great. Hmm. Okay, not sure I follow that. I guess um, it is a yeah, it's a sibling thing. I don't but know. you got you guys patched it up though. Yeah, how, we how, were fine. How long ago was that? We patched her up. How how long ago did that happen? Six. Days ago, six. Yeah, forest fire prevention week was yeah six days. See, ago. It was last week. Is this? Yeah, it was last week. You guys might be in a little bit of shock. I mean, I feel like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you've yeah. been through things I can't even imagine. You watched your dad get hit by lumber and die. Mm-hmm. Well, you opened you a new company. Yeah, you watched this man have sex with your wife, yes. his sister. You, you, you had watched sex right? with your sister. I had to watch, but you, you know, you did. <laughs> Sleep with Patrice. I did. Uh, wait a minute. Patrice's? You're, Patrice's? Patrice's. I call her Patrice, but yeah, Patrice. Your sister? Yeah. I just realized that. <laughs> oh my God. You really aren't putting together that <laughs> we. The familial that, connections. Yeah, that we wow. commit incest. That's heavy. <laughs> I thought you knew that. I thought that's Have why this was all seen, so um, weird. Game of Thrones? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what? Did you like it? I did. I I liked Game of Thrones very much. I like a lot. Just Sunday night for me just belongs to HBO. Just put uh-huh. me in front of a TV and me too. Put yeah. HBO on and yeah, I'm there. Yeah. Do you want to hear my um, my Sharona parody song about Game of Thrones? Okay. Sure. Yeah. Jack, I you're my moon and stars. My moon and stars. My 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 Khaleesi. Good. <laughs> now that's you're still Jack, right? But- <laughs> yes. <laughs> so did you guys feel like you um super related to a lot of themes in it? Mm. Why uh I don't I, I didn't really pick up on any themes. I have a question. Why didn't hmm. why why didn't you guys just marry your own sisters? It sounds like you that's Wanted. what you really wanted to do. Yeah. It's illegal, it's solely the only reason. So But ins- you're still committing is that illegal to have sex with your sister? Yes, yeah. as we found out. Yeah. Oh wait, you, you yeah. found out? You yes. got arrested? Yes. Yeah. Who did? Well, we when it happened, we each called the police on the other one. <laughs> <laughs> wait, was it happening at the same time? Yeah, same room. It happened same at room. the same time. And you were both on the phone at the same time calling the police. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> While we were fucking our sisters. <laughs> That Making did, love. Did that add to the? Sorry, sorry, Jack. Sorry about my language. Yeah, yeah I'm it's still. It's your sister. It's my wife. We're rock. talking about. Mm. You make love to your wife. You fuck your sister. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> I'll give you that. <laughs> it was uh, six days ago. Six days so ago, the police little. came, and then then uh, what? What happened, you guys? They arrested you. Is the they court- put us into a cell together at, down oh. at down at county? Were the sisters involved in? Were they arrested too? As were they, they were the willing cell? participants, they ran, and mm. we still have not seen them. Really? Yeah. So they're just out there somewhere. Yeah. Do but- they? Do they have their clothes with them? <laughs> they have or? their clothes, and we have our money stash buried. <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait, hold on. We have. He said we have our money stash buried. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, how how does one stash bury something? Or you, wow. where you stash it by burying it. It's a oh, stash I see. Bury. So so they they know where that stash berry is. That yeah. reminds me, we should we should break out that stash berry pie. Yeah, I have it. Okay, break it out. Mmm, that looks good. Let me. All right. Well, so while we eat the stash berry pie, um. Any, anything else? I, I I hope the court case goes well for you guys. Uh, do you have a, an arraignment date yet, or? Well, we're we're suing each other, and <laughs> oh, so it's a civil case. <laughs> but yeah. you're very calm. You seem pretty like. Well, well we, we get lumber, along very well. We have a lumber store to run, right? Yeah. So, w- were the other employees shocked at the, at this uh, at what transpired, or <laughs> have they heard about it, or? Are there other employees? No, no. it's just us. <laughs> 
Oh my God, that sounds like so classic. You got you got me in Hold HR. On. You <laughs> got him in the pine woods. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. it. This operation sounds strange. <laughs> you are you are there hiring and firing people and doing payroll. And your it seems like your only responsibilities are three types of wood and then making these cars. I make cars and I deal with the trees, which is just well, lumber or uh-huh. cars put put into boxes or right, right. Or we got we got this description. And it's an outdoor store. You were yeah. saying. Well, I I work the forklift. I don't know how to work it very well. Okay, I'm still learning. Okay. But I have to organize and stack all of the trees. So why did you, why you you obviously you needed help at the store? Yeah. There, uh, did this happen when Carl died? Uh, you, is he yeah. taking Carl's place? Well, no one works at, at Carl's Junior. <laughs> really, both, we're both at Carl's. So no one is there making the flipping the burgers or? Well, there aren't uh, any hamburgers. That's just the name of the place. Well, it's the big. <laughs> There was a brief period where we sold burgers, but uh-huh. that didn't work out. So no one's there. Is the store open? It is open. Just no, no one's no one works. Yeah, I there. mean, you could go there right now if you want. We put and out you, a jar. Oh, is it like the honor system? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow, guys. Well, you a couple of interesting characters here. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Should we come out? Come out. Should we come out of it? Oh, oh, yeah. Meaning, should the the men inside your bodies who are telling yeah. you what to do? Yeah. Should you come come out and, and yeah. okay, yeah, sure. Just give us two knocks on the table and and we're out. Okay, so um do do well, they we'll, need to be successive knocks or can they uh, Or do we need should we exit yeah, the we room? To, okay, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah we're going to need to walk first. out. We, okay. We're going to get out of here. It was nice to meet you guys. Oh, ditto. Nice to meet you, Brian. Um PCs. Peace. And best of luck with your lawsuit and your grieving and <laughs> Thank your you. companies. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, stand up. Walk out. Creek Slam. This has been an Earwolf Media production. Executive producers Jeff Ulrich and Scott Aukerman. For more information, visit Earwolf.com. Earwolf Radio Boom.com. <laughs> The world's dead.